good to see you on this uh, shortened holiday week for this Tuesday. I am Adara. This is Obi filling in for Sharif here. Uh, great to have you, and thanks for, for coming on here. Sharif is sick, so hopefully he feels better soon. We are wishing him um, luck in that. Right now we are here. We're going to get to the lesson in a little bit. But first, how are you doing this fine Tuesday morning? Um, I'm doing all right. Just, nice. Uh, a little bit of from, uh, from the weekend there, nothing too crazy. How about you, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. My weekend was like a bit, you know, a bit eventful, which is, which is nice, but now definitely gonna have to like chill out a little bit today, relax a bit on Tuesday, but excited to to get into some of these um, these these trades because there's certainly a lot a lot going on today. A little bit of recovery maybe to the upside. I'm gonna take a little bit, sorry I didn't get to the shout out this morning, but we have some people in the chat. Jay Vandeway, Pedro Khan, 420, Bud Monster, Hamster One, Manuel Palmo, Loaf, Adam DeLuce, Ronyel Garcia, Nate Bell, Bears versus Bulls. Um, so many people here in the chat just migrating in. Patrick Langlois, uh, uh, Jimmy J, Toilet Brush, Rogelio C. Everybody's coming in here. We are so excited to have you. What kind of trades have you made this morning? Um, I took uh, one trade. And I'm still, I guess I'm still in like a, like a breadcrumb of it, <laughs> of leftover. But uh, I took a little bit of Walmart. Walmart had, uh, had earnings today. So I was just watching that one quite, uh, quite strong uh, off of, uh, in the pre-market. So I was, I was just, uh, I was just uh, interested in what it was doing. So we had a trade on that. How about you? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done anything yet because, um, you know, I was kind of at the desk. That being said, um, I'm interested in the usual ones that kind of are of interest to me. NVIDIA making this really nice recovery off that kind of chop insured bottom run that's 684. I need to wait for this to kind of form levels because I like to have areas to range scalp. I don't really have that right now, but I will be, I'll be certainly interested. Not that I, you know, we'll see if we get to, to 708, knowing NVIDIA it's possible. But I think I always like areas of pre-market interest. The fact that that was kind of that pre-market low, what we do at 708 could be of interest to me. Also Google kind of looking interesting as well on my side chart, Google's up on the day, kind of honestly just kind of opportunities for dip buys along the way to the upside here. So I, I don't really have an issue with Google here at all right now, but just kind of waiting for things to, to show themselves. No rush, it's a, it's a shortened week, it's a Tuesday, and um, hopefully things will get shaking very soon in this market. So uh, yeah, for now though, we are going to get started with the lesson du jour, which is going to be trading terminology. So we're gonna be talking about trading terms all week. But today we're gonna to start with some, some basics, some stuff you really need to know to get, get a leg up in the markets. And thank you so much to Sharif for, for putting these together. Again, we hope he feels very better very soon. Thank you so much, very much appreciated. Uh, so bid and ask, this is demystifying the market option. So imagine you're in lively auction, you're um, haggling for a rare painting. So the bid is gonna be the highest price anyone's willing to offer, hoping to win the painting. So it's gonna be, if you see in movies and TV shows, that last minute, insanely <laughs> high bid. That's what we're talking about when we mean the bid. Okay. We mean the highest bid. The ask is gonna be the lowest price the seller is willing to accept. And the difference between the highest bid and the lowest ask, that's the spread. Uh, so the spread is your fee for participating in the auction. And so in the world of day trading, the auction um, happens electronically. So there's no actual using your auction paddle, right? All happens online, but the core concept does remain the same here. So we have uh, the bid, which is again, gonna be the highest price someone's willing to pay. And in this case, we're not talking about art. We're talking about stocks, securities, or other assets. And this represents buying pressure. Now the exact opposite is going to be the ask, which is the lowest price that someone's willing to sell for the same asset. And it does represent selling pressure. You guessed it there. Uh, we also have the spread. So this is gonna be the ask, ask minus the bid. And this is essentially the cost of doing business, right? Uh, tighter spreads will indicate a more liquid asset. So that means you have more buyers and more sellers kind of fighting each other with more ferocity. Uh, and this will make it easier to enter and exit positions. So when we talk about lower liquidity, that's what those larger spreads are going to be, which I think is pretty uh, important and definitely something worth knowing as well. Because I think it's, it's easy, especially someone who's pretty new to trading, to hear these terms thrown around a lot. But it's, it's one thing as well to kind of learn what they mean and how to navigate them. And I think especially spreads can be very tricky, especially with a lot of small caps running today as well, right? So those spreads can certainly be something worth keeping in mind. Also important to remember that the spread can vary depending on the asset. Uh, 
and its liquidity and its market conditions. And also you have to understand bid and ask dynamics uh, because it can be crucial for calculating potential profits and losses and making informed trading decisions. So as someone who has had some you know, rough times trying to be an Eli Lilly, a lot of that is because Eli Lilly has a bit of a, a, a crazier spread, right? And that's the same with something like, like a Meta or an NVIDIA where sometimes those spreads will be a little bit tricky as well. So you have to kind of formulate your entries and exits to keep that spread in mind. So that's something worth noting. Bonus tricks. So some, um, some trading platforms will actually allow you to see the order book. So that'll help you because it allows you to, to see the different buy and sell orders at various prices and you can get deeper insight into the market set uh, sentiment. So next time you see bid and ask, keep that auction analogy in mind. Instead of paddles, you're just pressing buttons there for sure. Um, also, long and short. Two sides of the trading coin. Another fantastic analogy here I'm very excited about. Imagine like a seesaw, right? So you have traders who believe an asset's price will rise, and on the other hand, you've got traders who think it will fall. So you have the, the bullish thinking the price will rise, you have the bearish traders thinking the price will fall. And long and short are the ways that you put yourself on the seesaw and you really want to profit from your chosen direction. Now there's also traders who are sometimes naturally leading more bullish or bearish as well. So when we say long bias or short bias, long bias traders are more likely to go long or to believe an asset might be bullish and short bias traders are gonna basically do the flip side of that. So going long is the classic buy low, sell high approach, right? You get an asset and you want its uh, price to increase in the future and in day trading, you know, for it, it, by the time you're out of the trade, right, by the end of the day. And this will allow you to sell it for a profit. So this is if you buy a ticket on a rocket ship you believe is headed to the moon. So it's like, you know, the whole concept of going to the moon. We say that generally in typically squeezier positions, but especially in long positions, right? Because you want it you want it to go up. Now going short is, is the opposite. This is the sell high, buy low. You borrow an asset from your broker and immediately selling it because you think the price will decrease later and then you buy it back at the lower price. So you return it to your broker then and will profit the difference. So this is like a, a boring or fans rare comic book, selling it and buying back later for cheaper. Pure profit, although maybe not like the best thing to do in a friendship scenario for this analogy, but certainly cool if you're doing it in the market. There are some differences though uh, between going long and going short. So direction, long bets on prices going up and shorts uh, are betting on them going down. And the initial actions, you're gonna buy in a long position and you're going to sell in a short position. And profits and losses are also gonna be different. So for profits, you want a higher sell if you're in a long trade and then you want a lower buy in a short trade and you, lo you lose in either case if the prices move against your prediction or the direction you've purchased into there, right? Going short uh, is also important. This involves boring, and so it, it carries additional risks like margin calls if you're going to be doing this in, in a longer term or a swing type position, right? Not all assets are available for shorting. You should consult your, um, your broker for details. And, you know, we talk about locates a lot as well. I know Neil uh, and Sean mentioning locates, so that's something to keep in mind as well for shorting. And also make sure to choose your long and short positions based on your analysis and risk tolerance. Don't pension all willy-nilly. Make sure you trade your own book and you're comfortable with the trade you're making. And also, you sometimes you might want to consider um, long and short strategies in combination for things like pairs trading. So if you have one asset in a sector that's going up and the other one you think might go down, maybe you want to pairs trade that, right? So whether you see yourself as a bullish air astronaut or cunning short seller, you really have to understand long and short to, to make sure you take more calculated positions and navigate this constantly shifting market landscape. Also, I want to shout out the Hayes Records 199 Super Chat, although this is a little sorry to hear this, utterly apoplectic, great word. <laughs> Weeble kept glitching my stop, uh, sad swearing emoji and then, or mad swearing emoji and then a gorilla emoji there, yeah. Nice. Yeah, good times there. Uh, what, what, a, what a time in these markets. I'm very sorry to hear though uh, that your stop has been glitched because that is never fun, especially as we're talking about longs and shorts here. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, Adara kind of covered covered uh, covered both those uh, topics quite well there. Um, almost uh, leaving leaving nothing uh, nothing for me to say. I'm so sorry. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. We're gonna switch it off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I think uh, I think. Um, the, the the next thing is mar margin leverage, but just to just to kind of go back and yeah, uh, talk about like uh, uh, the bid and ask again. I, I wasn't. Uh, uh, I want to I want to thank Adara again for for carrying this lesson. I was not prepared for this at all. I got a, I got a text uh, this morning from Sharif saying, "Hey, buddy, uh, I'm not feeling so well." I'm like, "All right, yeah, no problem. I got you." So uh, I, I did uh, look at uh, the lesson plan uh, a little after I, I got out of my uh, Walmart trade, so which was uh, quite recently. But uh, uh, but yeah, no. Um, 
simple terminology today, uh, bid and ask, and uh, going long and short, uh, we can just take a look at uh, at the level two to, to kind of uh, show and emphasize that as well, right? So we were talking about the best bid or the best offer right here. I got, uh, I got my friend Amazon, uh, Amazon on board right here. You can see the level two right here and the level one as well. And the level one is gonna show you that best bid and that best offer. And then everything else are like, you know how I like to see it? I like to see it as like people standing in line. So it's like the, the best bid and the best offer, you'll see them first in line, but everybody else behind them, you can see them on the tape right here. You can see the one lot at 26, four lots at 25, right? As you go further down, in the book, you see more. Uh, you see people further down in the line that may not be the best offer, but they'll be the next best or the, the next next best, right? So it's like um, I, I like to give it. I like to look at it like that, kind of like a. It's like a line of people um, being like, oh, I want to sell or I want to buy, and uh, you can use that uh, use that information to your advantage. Yeah, if you're trying to go long, you you can either you can either sit uh, uh, sit on the bid on the left hand side. You can either sit as the best uh, best bid, or you can get in line. Anywhere in between, what I love is uh, sometimes you can cut in line. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, all right, well, if that guy wants to buy at 31, um, I want to buy at 32. So you can jump, jump in front of, jump in front of him, uh, him like that. And same thing, vice versa for for the ask for for kind of going short. If I want to sell, I can sell straight to a buyer, or I can sell, I can post up, stand in line, and be like, all right, I don't like the best uh, the best uh, bid or the offer right now, but I am willing to sell at a higher price. So I'll, I'm willing to sell. Um, I'm willing to stand in line to to kind of get that uh, get that fill as well. But yeah, no, I think that was a that was a good uh, it's a good cover of uh, of just the just the basic concept of buy and sell, buying and selling, and uh, how you can take a look at them. Yeah, and I, I thank you for for that analogy. I really appreciate that, and I think it gave me like a, a better understanding as well. And I think what's interesting too is I think that analogy works as well because it's even like if you're if let's say if you're in line for like to get into a concert to get onto a ride, you know how sometimes it's like you want to see how many people are in front of you as well because they'll let in like X yep. number of people and you have to yep. be next. So I think that's another way that you can kind of keep in mind like do you split up your group to get onto the ride? How do you get your your shares in and out of the stock? How are you getting your group in and out of this ride as well? Right. So I think that's a really apt analogy. And thank Thank you so much for for bringing that one to the table there it is very much appreciated yeah and Thank i mean you. we also have margin and leverage so this is, can help you amplify your trade. So imagine you have a financial superpower, which would be, uh, thank you for the bang button there, um, controlling a, a much larger position than your own capital allows. And that's why margin can be so tempting. It's a tool that day traders use, but make sure you're very cautious. I'm going to get the, the grandpa finger back in here. Be very careful here. So let's get into this. So what is margin? So margin is basically a loan from your broker. So you deposit a minim minimum amount, usually about 25 to 50% of the position value. Oh, what? Okay, boomer. I guess the grandpa finger there. Ah, uh, no. okay, okay. That makes sense. I like that. I, that button. I like that. It's like kind. Of, it takes its time to to show up. No, I enjoyed that. It just took me for a second. I thought it was like the fail button, but fancy. So I was like, what's happening? But I like that one. I, there's so many buttons. I'm never. I'm never aware. Yeah, you Shout never out know to which baby one is going to show me. up. Pardon? You said you never know which one is going to show up, but yeah. it's always. Uh, it's it's good to you know, in anticipation. Yeah, it's it's fun. To, it's fun to see what happens there for sure. Um, so basically, yeah, so so once you have the uh, minimum amount for your deposit, so it's usually going to be about 25 to 50% of the position value, that's going to be your margin, and then you can borrow the rest to control a larger position. It's like using a lever to lift a heavier weight. So you, you're lifting it still partially yourself, but you're getting a little extra oomph for that lift. What about leverage? So this is kind of um, the... The magnifying glass, you can think of it like that. So this is the, the board portion is going to be your leverage. This will magnify your potential profits if the price moves in your favor. However, it can also magnify your losses if the price goes against you. So this is very much a double-edged sword. Uh, it, it can go either way here. Some key points to keep in mind. Higher leverage is higher potential for returns and for losses. So it, it, and, like, it ups the stakes in either direction. So that can be really good if your position goes well. It can also be going badly if your position goes against you. So this might be a thing with risk management where you might want to take a little bit less if you're, if you're less confident in the position, a little bit more, but always, as we say, be very cautious. Keep risk management in line. Margin requirements can also vary depending on the asset and your broker. And also keep in mind margin calls. So if your account value falls below a certain threshold and that's going to be due to losses, your broker might kind of force you to sell these assets, be like, hey, bro, like you got to yep. get these out, got to fulfill there, done that. The, the margin <laughs> requirements there. So is margin for you? Because it can be lucrative, but there are some things to keep in mind, including uh, you need strong risk management skills, you know, as we just said there. 
deep understanding of the technical analysis elements and discipline to avoid emotional trading. So some alternates to margins could be um, focusing on smaller positions or considering paper trading as I am doing myself to kind of get into the market. Yeah, what are your what are your kind of thoughts on margin and leverage? Um, yeah, no, I think I think it's uh, it's great. Like when I first started uh, sort of trading, I think it was. Um, uh, I, I forget which broker it was. I think it might have been Trade Zero. They were doing a, like a 4x leverage to begin with, and then uh, they uh, up to like a 6 6x as well. But uh, yeah, no, definitely something to something to use wisely, right? Um, uh, you can. I think. I think what it usually is is like. Uh, if you go, if you draw down your your uh, initial cash cash position, then yeah, you're I think you're, you're closed out of the account. And if you draw down even more than that, of course you're going to get that uh, phone call or email these days from uh, from the bro broker just saying that uh, you know you might be um, uh, a little negative on your account, and we we want you to even that out uh, within a timely manner. But uh, yeah, if if you use it if you use it wisely, I think it's it's a good tool. Um, a lot of a lot of different brokers will provide you with all sorts of different kinds of leverage. You know the you know the crypto world is absolutely ridiculous, absolutely wild for that 100x leverage in some places, oh maybe God. even more. You guys definitely know a lot more than I do on, uh, on that topic. But uh, yeah, no, leverage is, 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 a, is a tool, I think, if you use it wisely, can be very beneficial. But like you said, it is a double-edged sword. Um, it is borrowed money. It's, there's, there are going to be restrictions around it and uh, yeah, limitations as well. So if you know what you're doing and you have, you have, uh, I think you have, a, you have a decent strategy and you can work with the margin well, I think it works. So it, it works decently well. So, yeah, yeah no, that, th thank you for your perspective on that as well. And yeah, I think it's certainly um, certainly something I'm I'm trying to learn more about as you know as I wade into the markets. But right now, I don't even touch like leverage ETFs. So I think certainly something worth learning here. Ch uh, Chuck of all trades uh, saying margin call. Have you seen that movie? No. Oh, okay, it's a uh, it's a it's it's a good it's a good one. Um, uh, I've seen it maybe like a, a, a couple times, okay. but uh, it's one scene uh, one scene from the movie really vibes with me. When uh, when he goes, um, sell it, sell it all. I really like that one. For those of you who know, you know. But uh, yeah, no, it's a great movie. I think you should definitely. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I need to. I need to watch more. I really need to watch more trading um, movies for sure. That's certainly something I need to. Um, because I just watched Dumb Money and that was really good, but I'm trying to get. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, it's worth watching. Okay. They, they, the All tone right. of it, I think they handle really well because it's like, it, you know, they have like the underdog story element, but it's also really funny. Okay. But yeah, I need to, I need to give yeah. Margin Call a watch. Thank you for yeah, that. Mar Margin Call is definitely a classic. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, sell it all. <laughs> you appreciate that that recommendation. I think sell it all is what the market's saying today a little bit. But yeah, no, certainly something I need to check out. Thank you for that. Um, so. Oh, there we go. Margin call the poster actually here on the corner. Oh, wow. So, so you and Sharif Perfect. were Look at thinking that. the same way hey. here too, which is <laughs> fabulous. Great minds do think alike. And thanks again to Sharif for, for putting this together. But now we're going to talk about order types. This is our master class in, in order types here. And this is how you can speak the trading language, the, the regional dialect of traders, if you will. So these are... Um, these are pretty standard vocabulary in the trading world because it tells you exact the market exactly how you want to enter and exit your positions. So some of the basics here, market orders. These are the now or never orders, and they execute immediately at the best available price. So you punch in, the market listens immediately. And you talk, it says how high or how low, I guess, depending. Um, and this will basically ensure your order gets filled quickly, and it's really good for capturing fleeting opportunities, but uh, you should be mindful of potential price slippage or filling at a slightly different price. That's one thing to definitely keep an eye on with regards to market orders. Now we have limit orders. So these are the, these are more patient negotiators. So you want a desired price, a limit to buy or sell, and the order will only execute if the market price reaches your limit. So this ensures you get your desired price or better. And this is like setting a boundary, a little cushion for your trade. Like, hey, if we don't get here, I am not getting in or out. And those can be really helpful as well, especially in some of the more volatile names. Like you just have, have one set. Also though, keep in mind if you set a limit order, because I've done this before um, on some mega caps actually, where I've set a limit order, then forgot, then it fills and I'm like, oh, okay, we actually don't want this anymore. And then it becomes a bit of a scramble, right? So, so keep your eye if you do set these. We also have stop loss orders. So this is gonna be your safety net. This will automatically sell your position uh, if your price falls below a specific level or stop loss price. And so this will limit any potential losses if the market does move against you. So this is like setting a self-destruct timer 
for your capital. Make it sound like a, you know, really intense, really intense action here. Just set the stop loss uh, or self-destruct timer to protect your capital. That is going to be a stop loss order. Now there's also a stop limit order. So this is a bit of a combination between the flexibility uh, and the caution that you have with a stop loss order. So they act like a stop loss order, but there's an added limit condition. So the order will trigger a market order to sell only if the price falls below your stop loss level and reaches your specific limit price. So it gives you a bit more of a buffer. This is a two-step safety net that gives you a bit more control over your execution price. Last but not least, trailing stop loss order. So these are gonna be more flexible kind of protection. You're leaning more in the flexibility aspect of what we just mentioned with those stop limit orders, right? Uh, these will adjust the stop loss level automatically as the price moves favorably in your direction. So let's say you know, you're know you in a short and the price kind of moves, if the price moves down, your stop, or your trailing stop loss will move with you, right? So these are a little bit more intricate to set. Imagine your stop loss trailing behind a rising price, locking in profits while protecting against sudden reversals. Also make sure though to choose the order type that best suits your trading strategy and your risk tolerance. Cause some of these are gonna be a bit, you know, for different, for different risk appetites, right? You also wanna consider combining different order types for more sophisticated strategies and practice using different order types in a simulated environment before risking real capital. Uh, so all really good stuff to keep in mind. Do you have any preferences or any things that you keep in mind with regards to order types? Yeah, for sure. I, th I think um, uh, just, to, just to go back to that uh, slide there, um, I I, I, again, going back to that analogy of like, okay, standing in line, right? We were talking about market orders versus limit orders. And uh, yeah, limit orders, I think that's, that's like when, you're, when you choose to stand in line. You're, you're just like, okay, yeah, I, I like this price. It might not be the best bidder offer right now, but I'm going to stand in between with that limit order at this price. Now that can be anywhere, uh, anywhere really, and it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly where the market is trading at right now. But when you do that market order, you're pretty much shoving, shoving to the front of the line for the most part and being like, okay, whoever's selling, I want to buy. Whoever's buying. I want to sell, and uh, yeah, you pretty much come in like a wrecking ball, and uh, you can you pre you wipe the book uh, uh, in in a sense, depending on how how large you are with that market order. You're basically like uh, any and every price, whatever the best bidder offer is. I want this many shares market, and then it'll it'll uh, it'll do well in in uh, in filling those at whatever that may be. Now, if you're in a spready environment, we were talking about the spread earlier. Uh, if the spread is like a like like a whole point away, you are gonna you're gonna travel that spread in that in that market order more uh, more likely than not. Uh, but yeah, that's something you do want to be aware uh, aware for uh, aware of. And yes, you get, you get stop orders as well. Uh, of course, everybody knows about stop orders, the different types of stop orders, right? And we're talking about the trails, the, uh, the stop limits, um, and trailing stops as well. You can kind of, uh, I, think, I think there are some platforms that have automated, automated trails where uh, I think you can just uh, trail on a moving average or trail on uh, uh, something else, uh, a different indicator, whether it be VWAP or a TWAP or whatever that is. But uh, yeah, no, trailing stops and um, uh, stop limits definitely important types of orders for sure, but uh, yeah, no, I like uh, I like the I like the market order kind of because uh, because with a market order more often than not you're removing liquidity where with uh, with a limit order you're adding liquidity to the book so there's different ways you can kind of kind of play around with that there we are, we talk about like gates we talk about rebate gates where you can actually get paid for uh, providing liquidity. So those are usually limit orders that are just sitting there. And uh, yeah, when you're standing in line, the market is like, all right, well, this person is adding liquidity. There's a potential to get paid for providing that service um, uh, to, uh, to, to, the, to the book, right? And uh, you can kind of use uh, rebates to fulfill that in a sense. But uh, yeah, no, I think uh, um, being aware of the ty different types of orders you can use, the different ki kind of ways you can enter and exit uh, the market is definitely important. To, uh, to solidify before you really kind of uh, indulge yourself into, into the trades. Yeah, no, and I, I totally agree with what you just said as well about uh, the liquidity, erasing liquidity with, or I guess not adding liquidity. Yeah, adding and removing. The, yeah. the market orders, right? Because I remember that was one thing that when I was, you know, learning with Brankles, shout out there, that was one thing that was really brought up a lot that I think was really important for me to hear and that I've really kept in my mind. Like, you know, you want to always make sure that you are contributing to the liquidity because we love liquidity as day traders and you don't want to be taken though. away from that. That's true too. Here's the thing. if, For example, if Arm is like running away from me, right? It's like, if, am I gonna stand, am I gonna be like, if it's running away from me, am I gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna go stand in line now, or am I gonna be like, no, I want that, I That's want true. that price right now, I don't care about standing in line, I don't care about how much I have to pay, 
because I have I, whatever it might be in my mind, high, like wh whether it be probabilities or whether it be just like confidence or strategy or whatever it is. It's like I want, I'm more than willing to pay up for this price because I believe that I can, whatever, I can, this price is gonna go higher or lower. But yeah, no, I think there's definitely times to, times to pay up for it and remove the liquidity that's gonna be more beneficial. Otherwise, you're just gonna be left, left, uh, left in the dust. It'll that's just true. go like three points, three points without you. And this has happened to me in the last week where Arm has a little bit of a spread, right? And I post a limit. And I'm far away from the spread because you're, you're already disadvantaged if it's spready and then you're posting a limit, but you're trying to do momentum trading, mm -hmm. which is like something that I kind of, uh, uh, well, not really learned, but like re that, that lesson was reinforced by Mother Market uh, last, uh, last week where I was kind of posting uh, some orders on ARM and it would just fly away and I wasn't willing to kind of uh, market it out or be willing to pay pay up for the best bid or uh, or the bet, best ask either way, right? So uh, definitely, it's it's situational. I think I do believe that uh, there are times where it just makes a lot more sense to remove liquidity. But uh, yeah, no, I like to play both ways. I got both type of keys kind of programmed on my keyboard for uh, removing and adding liquidity. So. Uh, yeah, definitely something something to consider when you're when you're d depending on the type of trading you're doing. I think. Yeah, no, and thank you so much for taking us through that as well. Like that's much appreciated because um, that's definitely like a different perspective. I, you know, as someone who's a little bit less experienced, I definitely appreciate that POV, and I'm sure people in the chat do as well. Curtis the Conqueror enjoying the mother market. This is still one of my, also my favorite phrases I've gotten here from um, OB on the midday. Yeah, so that is our lesson for today, but we will, as you know, we'll kind of circle back to it. We'll repeat um, as as we are as we do. Um, are you, is there anything you have your eye on right now, though, in terms of the market? Um, just watching Walmart here. Walmart's kind of doing its thing. Uh, nothing too crazy. Let's, uh, we can talk about it here. Um, yeah, so uh, it, very, very strong in the pre-market. Uh, we saw how it was, uh, they, they, they did well um, for their earnings. They beat on their revenue and their, uh, and their earnings there. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure about, uh, about the guidance too much, but uh, th it did happen this morning. Uh, and the report was released this morning and we did get a push uh, through uh, some fresh prices there, some all-time highs on Walmart, all-time high right now being the high of day at that 181. 38, but uh, yeah, no real follow through off of that 180. So I did kind of uh, pick up on that. I did initially, uh, I was initially looking for a continuation, but when I saw the move not really continue, I was, uh, I tried to be as nimble as I could and kind of uh, took a little bit of uh, the down move there. And it seems to be consolidating in and around some of these levels here, just underneath that, uh, this consolidation that happened right before the open. And uh, in between this, this, uh, these prices here, this earnings, you can see this earnings reaction high. We can go down to a lower time frame to get a little bit of a better picture of, uh, of what kind of went on this morning. You kind of had a nice little um, drop down into 168, reclaim of 170s, and the slow grind up. And again, it's obviously, it's doing significant Arvel. It had its earnings day one. And yeah, definitely, uh, let's, let's put on some VWAP there as well. Yeah, so right now we are trading below VWAP. Uh, it is kind of selling off. It's lost that, it's kind of lost that momentum from the morning session for the most part. So uh, it does seem like it's poised for a little bit of a, of a pullback here. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how far we'll we'll see how far we can get with this one. I like that 175 again. Just a little bit of a psychological level. You can see some funky action going on here, just above that 175 in the pre-market as well. But yeah, other than Walmart, I think I had Home Depot on watch uh, also. So uh, Home Depot, I did, it didn't necessarily do what I was uh, what I was looking for right off the open. I did have a bunch of uh, not really too much, but like a few if then statements, and uh, nothing really clocked in. So uh, I guess I got to do I got to do better with the if thens. But uh, yeah, it, it didn't really follow anything that I was looking for. This one the retrospect though, this 350 hold uh, right before the open was pretty nice. But uh, and it, we did break pre-market consolidation range right off the open, or even in the pre-market, what candle is that? That's 27, all right, so right before the open we did that, so a little bit of a front run before into the market open, so uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Not really too familiar with, uh, I, again, this is, I think this is my fourth, um, third, third earnings season that uh, I'm trying to, I'm still trying to figure things out, but things are coming together. Um, 
uh, a little bit there. But yeah, every earnings season has been a little different there. And uh, we, we try to adapt. We try to kind of uh, capture, these, capture these moves. But today, again, coming in from a long weekend, um, I didn't have too much on watch. We had some day two plays as well. I know that we got DraftKings. I, I, got, I got my list of day twos right here. We got DraftKings, Coin, Roku, Dash, um, AMAT, and Dropbox, all, all day two earnings. And I haven't really looked at those uh, as of recent just yet. So let's take a quick look at Coin because we know that Bitcoin has been moving around. Actually, before that, let me quickly take a look at Bitcoin before we go to Coin. All right, so a little bit of a pullback, 53. All right, okay, we got some fresh highs on, on the BTCs. When did that happen? Because uh, last time I checked, okay, yeah, I checked, er, I checked before, uh, before 7 a.m. this morning. But uh, okay, so around 8, 8, 39 o'clock, we did clip to the T on this exchange specifically, 53,000, and we did pull back quite decently right back into the bottom of the range. So it, it seems like coin is taking a, a, a wee bit of a pullback as well. Um, but yeah, earnings, earnings was uh, on uh, Thursday night, Friday was day one, and we kind of broke below Friday's lows. Look at this consolidation. Well, if you want to call it a consolidation, but uh, pretty much flat action on the day. You wash VWAP, go pretty much sideways. You close in and around the lows as well. You come off the open, 180. Oh boy, that 180 was definitely interesting on, uh, on Friday. And then a nice little flush right off of uh, previous day's lows coming right back in, but hasn't really violated this earnings reaction high or low. We're pretty much trading inside of that on Coinbase. But yeah, um, I have no idea. But Bitcoin definitely moving around there uh, as well. So uh, I think Roku was, uh, Roku was uh, another name here that I was interested in. It was a little heavy on Friday. We saw that happen. A nice little continuation of a strong sell-off off the earnings. And it seems like the day two, we pretty much, uh, we, we break below previous day's lows in the pre-market, that 70 cracks, and we're trading much, much lower, 66 double bottom as of right now on Roku. But yeah, other than that, I don't really have too much on watch. Large caps, um, I am watching Amazon, I'm watching uh, Alphabet as well. Softy looking interesting as well. We, have some, we had some interesting trades on Softy last week. We were trading below those prices. So I am kind of, uh, it is the beginning of the week. It's a shortened week. I'm gonna, st I'm gonna observe a little bit, try to be as patient as possible. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's SMCI, of course. SMCI has been on everyone's watch. Wish I had the risk to trade this one. Oh boy. But uh, fading off of VWAP, nice little continuation fade. We saw what it's been doing. Oof. Day one, red day was quite, quite aggressive. And day two, I had that 800 marked and right off the open, 800 flush. Actually, maybe if I was, if I was, uh, if I was, uh, if I was really sniping this, I think this was well within my risk to kind of take here. How far, how long did it spend above 180 off the open or how much? The high is, sorry, 801.58. So about a point and a half worth of risk could have been taken for that 800. Okay. All right. Well, we will reassess. But uh, again, I think, uh, I think I am a little wary of this one because I think uh, it, just my opinion right now doesn't really mean anything. I'm just a, just a trainee. But uh, with the way this thing was moving, I was like, uh, I was, I was doing, uh, doing some reviews, trying to make some plans over the weekend just to, just to have plans to trade this ticker. Uh, and I was like, 800 looks good. But uh, in my opinion, I want to give it like a four to five point uh, risk to really kind of uh, be effective on it. But Lo and behold, it gives you much tighter. SMCI gave you a one and a half point risk off the 800 right off the open, but you had to be a sniper to get that. And uh, flushes right through that opening range low right there. Trip sevens, it would seem, uh, was, uh, was the opening range low. Just looking at the first minute right there. But uh, yeah, nice little fader on the day today. We, are, we did get below 700, but I know a lot of people were talking about this ticker over the weekend. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, trades on the equity, a lot of trades on the option chains. Absolutely wild. Crazy opportunities. Crazy yeah. opportunities in this market. I mean, Gotta yeah, nothing my, uh, micro about super micro and those moves lately. Yeah. I remember at one point I pulled this one up during the midday on Friday. And in the time I looked at it for like two minutes, we went from, I want to say, 835 to 810 like that. There's oh, yeah. no room for you to get in. You cannot bamboozle your way in. Shout out to Sharif. You really have to like... It, it, it's it's insane. It, it it is really a tough one for sure. Wow. But you're right. Certainly, there are opportunities. 
uh, for sure. Also, one of those ones you mentioned, I actually did uh, get into here, and that's Roku. I like this double bottom. I like this kind of range play. We got you. I'm always talking about ranges here, and I mean, to me, honestly, if I can even just take this to that um, 68 area, I'd be pleased as punch. We'll take like what, like 50 cents on this. Might save a piece for the dream at this 68.40 area. I'd be pretty happy with this. Uh, this little tiny. Roku scalp, like I said, you know, I'm always a little bit more comfortable something when it when it has levels and also when it uh, I guess retest areas successfully. So we did see not just because it's VWAP, although I do think the VWAP adds a little bit of spice to this, but I like too that we had this kind of area here before we had to move back into that 68 where we had we tested this this like 6730 area and then we had buyers buy it right back up. So I think that's a pretty pretty strong look. I would like a little bit more of a confident reclaim here as we come right back up of that 67.30. If we fail 67.30, it could be a short, but for right now, I like the long here. But if we do fail 67.30 decisively, kind of get into that 67.20 area, I am going to have to be out. So that is that is the look on Roku. Meta, I saw some people in the chat mentioning Meta potentially falling uh, back to the downside, and it certainly did. But if you had any movement from that long here and that pseudo double, I guess even triple bottom, if you want to say from free market, triple bottom on Meta at the 467 and some change, congrats to you. That was a fabulous look. We made a slightly lower high, and the Meta, Meta came careening back to the downside. However, this level, should we actually pause at this level, might be interesting for me, because that was an area where we had a little bit of a spike at the pre-market to the upside and then fell back down. So that would be that 470, 30-ish area. If we do pause here, could be of interest for now, though I'm gonna let Meta decide what it wants to do. Tesla continuing to the downside in a way that I like. We just have these lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower lows. Really straightforward. If we continue to make a lower low here, this could be of interest to me, but I want to wait and see Tesla give me a reason to get involved here. However, what a top and tail candle early. We try to get right into VWAP, then we reject right back down with the swiftness, with the viciousness, what have you. Um, also, Sean just saying that if you're looking at his position board on More Trader TV Live, it's not working, but they are going to be on it. So just in case you want to know for Sean's positions, they will be on, uh, it is on the mend right now. They are working on it there. So keep that in mind if you are looking at our brand new uh, channel, which we're all very excited about there, our new stream. Um, yeah, we appreciate the heads up there, Sean. Also Google, very, very doing something. I don't know, it, it, I think it's a little bit clearer in the three minute because I have the three minute, or sorry, I have the one minute on my side, Jared, for some reason for Google. But yeah, this rounded top is, is telling a story now, you know, as we, as we like to say here too, usually signals are going to be a bit clearer if, if we have it on a wider time frame. So the one minute, maybe a little bit less so, but this, this rounded top in the one minute, certainly sending some kind of reversal signal. For now, though, I'm probably going to focus on just finagling my way out of Roku because it looks like Roku does not want me involved at this, at this time. And that's fine. I can get out. Going to keep my eye on Tesla for further downside and see if I can get a range play there. Uh, Google could be interesting if we continue this reversal pattern. I could, I could, you know, try to, to weasel my way in here. But we also had Meta trying to curl back up at that area I was interested in that 470. So I might have to try to get some kind of range here. How are you doing over here? Uh, not too bad. I'm just uh, just looking around here. Um, I, I, I'm, I got, like, like I said before, I got, a, I got a breadcrumb of Walmart left on, uh, on, on this short here. I'm just looking at potential places where, I'm uh, kind of reviewing the trade, just like where could I have been a little bit bigger? Where can I have been, uh, I guess, a little bit less tight? I did get stopped out on my initial shorts here into that 180 level uh, when I did see the failure to, failure to follow through. But uh, uh, a little bit of, in my opinion, a little bit of an unnecessary stop, not really giving it, to the, to giving it the risk that, I, uh, that it kind of deserves there um, in and around those 180s uh, when we've already watched that 181. But but again, it's a work in progress. I got to get a little bit better at that one and uh, giving things the real risk that they deserve, right? But uh, we are coming, uh, pulling back into this 175, 176 area-ish right now. But uh, yeah, this, I, I was looking for a pop to come right back into VWAP here. I was sitting here right here on this wash when it did come back into VWAP and I was like, oh, okay, here's another shot. Should I take the shot here? And I hesitated for like literally like 10 seconds which is, a, which is a lifetime if you're talking to a trader, but uh, there's a long, very long hesitation. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe. And then it just flushes 
right away. And I was like, well, damn, uh, I kind of missed out on that one. And uh, I started uh, started covering right on top of that 177 right away. But uh, yeah, it is, it is kind of uh, pulling back here. The market's pulling back as well, 17.6. Um, as of right now, and uh, we're still trading underneath uh, uh, or underneath 17.6 as of right now on the NQ, and trading underneath 5K on uh, on the ES as well. I, I did write down last week in my notes, it's like, yeah, finally we made it to 5K. Uh, do you expect it to be clean? Do you expect it to be a little bit of a wash? I have no idea, but just stay wary um, is uh, what I had in my notes, and uh, wary we have been for sure in and around that 5K mark on uh, on the ES, and we have been washing it quite nicely. And uh, I don't know when the laundry is going to be done, but uh, it seems like uh, it seems like we're we're going to be around here for a little bit longer. But uh, nothing nothing else really on my radar. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are you guys looking at? What are you guys trading today? What is your top idea on the day? I mean, you don't have to share with me if you don't want to, but I'd like to know. We can go through some of these tickers. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a midday, midday idea or a late day afternoon idea. I know I have a couple on the block that I'm still waiting for, but ha- haven't really set up yet. So um, I'm not really gonna not really give the, gonna give those any attention and, unless and until they do kind of uh, kind of set up there. A lot of people talking about this uh, CPOP. Is that is that I I, I think I know that name. Um, uh, that that's a little bit of that small cap, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's going wild right now. Nothing I really like to touch here. But uh, again, we <laughs> we were talking about uh, we were talking about margins and margin calls. And uh, oh boy, uh, small caps will definitely uh, definitely give you a visit to that margin call real quick. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, the shares float. 13 mil share float with a 53 market cap, not too bad, but a seven. Uh, take a look at this thing. This thing moving from two dollars, three, four to five, and now we're now we're really accelerating to the upside, seven dollars. But we've already came to these prices before. These were prices from Friday, uh, pre-market as well. So maybe a little bit of a liquidity trap. I don't know, maybe. Um, but uh, let's take a look, quick look at the volume that's been happening here. This is a day two of the move, significantly lower volume on day two after a strong flush like that, and it's only 13 million. Oh boy, does that set up for some nice, uh, nice opportunities for sure. Take a look at that, just looking left right away. 746 highs and we've kind of washed those already. So um, uh, definitely an interesting price action on this one today. But uh, something I don't really like to, like, like to dabble in, I'll be honest. Um, I do think that to, to effectively, uh, now this is just my opinion, I, I know nothing, but uh, to effectively kind of trade these, I would love to have uh, a nice, deep well of a, of a risk and kind of work in and out of, uh, out of these tickers here. Because uh, when, when and if they do get going, oh boy, do they really, uh, can they really get going? And uh, when that float is cornered, when you've kind of dried up, when you have dried up liquidity after a day of a strong volume, I think uh, some interesting market mechanics definitely take place on uh, on these tickers. And uh, I do, I, I like, I like, uh, I, I think uh, as of late, I just been a little more focused on larger caps, something with a larger mar- uh, market cap, something that requires some more dollar volume to push around, right? Anybody can come into this. For example, what is it trading at? It's at $6, it's a 50, 40, uh, 46 mil market cap. Uh, float is 13 mil. We don't know how much of that float is actually free float, how much of it's cornered, how much of it's held, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, best believe anybody with, uh, we can just do the math right there. You give it a 10 mil, give it six, $6. Anyone with six, 60 mil worth, can come in and really kind of wash this thing around. Not, not, I'm saying, not that I'm saying they would, not that I'm saying it, it makes sense to do so, but it can definitely be gun, done. So uh, I do like to just watch on, uh, on these. But uh, other than that, I got Apple on watch as well. Apple's doing a bit of a recovery off of this 180. Wow, 180 to the T is the low. Okay, okay, I see you, Apple. 180 to the T is a low, and then you pop back up over this consolidation. Now you're holding and consolidating on top of VWAP after that 180 bounce? Huh, interesting stuff. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a potential setup for, for the afternoon for me, I have no idea, but uh, Google kind of pulling back off of that 142. Amazon still chilling around that 187. Um, Spider. Still in and around that 500. I know that 500 has been a bit of a, a bit of a key area, a bit of a psychological area as well. We've been uh, we've been washing around that 500, just like we have been that 5,000 on the ES, uh, relatively similar. But uh, 
Yeah, nothing too crazy. But yeah, we looked at we looked at CPOP. I see that uh, Damani, uh, Damanika saying Walmart, Costco short. Okay, all right. Well, we took we we're looking at Walmart right now. But let's take let's pull up Costco and see what Costco's up to. Um, okay, nice. A little bit of a, a little bit of a short coming in on on Costco. 735 being the highs there now it did have some uh, relative volume in the pre-market so that's definitely interesting it wasn't on my watch um, uh, last night or for this morning but I think Costco is in and around some sort of highs if I remember correctly um, I think it might be is it all-time highs or 52 weeks yeah Sean saying all-time highs yeah, definitely. Uh, it's looking like all-time highs here. Just got to pull up the weekly. Yes, for sure. It is all-time highs. Whew. Wow. Say again. No, its last high was five sixty. It's since we broke that. Yeah, we've been. We uh, Sean saying last high was five sixty, and then since we've broken that, we've just been bidding straight up. So yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, Costco on a rip right there uh, since we broke those previous highs. How are we doing off of earnings? Earnings held well as well. We held those earnings reaction prices as well in and around that 640, and we've only been trending up since then. So Costco quite strong, it would seem, uh, this year. Uh, well, this year has only been a month and a half, but uh, very, very strong post earnings, it would seem, on Costco. But yeah, da uh, Dominica, nice, uh, nice little trade on the short on Costco if you have it uh, in and around any of those prices. It would seem Seems as if above VWAP uh, was a was a decent place to sell with uh, with what's been printed on the chart uh, so far, but that's just retrospect, right? But uh, yeah, decent decent trade there. But overall, bigger picture uptrend, it would seem very very strong on Costco. Yeah, I mean, so so much to look at here. Also, Dominica, uh, actually, thank you here. Two dollar super chat with a little uh, bird that says cool. She also saying thanks from Michigan. Uh, Thanks for the shout out. So yeah, thank you for your support. Thank Much you. appreciated. And yeah, I mean, Costco, the chart, only thing I have to say is wow, like that moved yeah. to the upside. So thank you for covering that one. Obi, also Sean saying love some cost. So that's a nice little cameo in the chat as well. You know, very good move at what cost? Apparently lots of move to the upside there <laughs> for Costco. At the cost of shorts. At the cost of shorts yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna snap there. I love, you know, good. We enjoy puns over here. So, um, yeah, hearts to you, girl. Hearts to you as well, Dominica. Fabulous time. Also, so I was in a little teeny NVIDIA scalp that I'd like to, to chat about here. Uh, so I got involved here. Uh, I was at this, I don't love my point of entry, the 683.50 uh, area. So we, we fell a little bit, but then we held that 683 really well. So I stayed in this. My plan was if we decisively broke that 682, so we gave it about $1.50, uh, which is probably a little bit too much. I should really be reevaluating my risk and reward. The plan was to keep a little bit more of the piece for the dream, getting into that 686 area, because that was an area we'd certainly seen a lot of action earlier. But in the end, you know, I ended up giving it up at that 684.50. So the risk to reward was a little bit meh in retrospect, but happy we were able to eke out a bit of a win here. Roku, we did end up losing on. We fell decisively below VWAP. Now it's kind of chopping, turning in an interesting way. Uh, but I'm not going to get back involved in this until I see a little bit more of an opportunity here because we did fail that previous, uh, this pre-market area of support, that 680, uh, failed that area when we came back into resistance there. So that's the look for me on Roku. Also worth noting, Meta. I really like this Meta range. If Meta keeps chopping and turning at that 470, 470, uh, 470, 50, 470, 80 area, I could, I could scalp this in and out. I say, okay, I... Yeah, I could, the timing would have to be very good. But theoretically, one could scalp this in and out. So we'll see if my fingers are nimble enough to execute such a trade. But I like the look of this meta right now. Also, Tony Prof. Uh, Tony, Tony Price was asking me, so I don't know where Prof came from. Tony Price, shout out to the professor, Sharif. Tony Price uh, was asking me about SoFi. Maybe that's where the OF came, I don't know. Anyways, I think this SoFi look is interesting. I think I, I was trying to see here if we had any news. Shout out to Benzinga. Not seeing anything here. But let me see, I'm seeing something. Uh, oh, okay. So ARK did buy some, um, some SoFi, uh, apparently adding um, 2 million shares valued at 17.31 million. So that was, yeah, that was as of today this came out. So that could give it a little boost. We're only about 0.5% up on the day though. I think if we reclaim an another higher high, so that 840 area, I think that'd be really nice. I think this sort of double bottom at that 820 gives a nice area of support. And I think, you know, this, it's its not exact, but that 834, 835-ish area as previous resistance becoming support, 
is not a bad look either. I want to look at the daily, though, for better areas for SoFi. This is not a name that I really trade. I know um, Neil and Sean are, are in this name a little bit more than I. But I think, yeah, I think SoFi is certainly always a little bit interesting. This area I will always be fascinated by in SoFi, this 8 and 10 cents-ish area. One, two, three, four touches right now of support. Decent support area there. Resistance, that 860 area, once, twice. Um, kind of coming into to some interesting levels there. So that would be kind of my main look for SoFi. But I think generally, if we start kind of even back in, in August here, lower highs, uh, not really lower lows, though. We actually kind of stopped tre the trend of lower lows coming into January. So instead of making that lower low here, we're kind of trying to trend back up. I think if we can reclaim this 910 area that we touched twice I, and then uh, fly above it, I think that would be a bit of a stronger look for SoFi going forward. On um, an intraday look here, though, I do think, yeah, as long as we keep making these higher highs, higher lows, not at all a bad look for S to the O to the F to the I. NVIDIA still kind of struggling here. This is not something I, someone was saying in the chat, I believe NVIDIA is a falling knife. I kind of agree. I think as long as we hold up that 682 bottom, I might, you know, you know, mouse around in there. I don't know, uh, get in and out, but but not something I'm super confident in because as you're right, it can get a little dicey. Mainly, I'm interested in this meta range because that's not a bad look um, at all right now, I don't think. I'm mostly just kind of looking for other things to trade. If anybody's seeing anything they like, keep putting those in the chat. Um, great community here, literally, as, as Bears versus Bulls just said, fabulous times. How are you doing over here? How is the breadcrumb of Walmart going? Uh, the breadcrumb of Walmart uh, seems, to be, uh, seems to be continuing to fall. I haven't really looked, uh, found any places to get more um, just yet, but uh, again, it is what it is. Uh, what I'm realizing is like sometimes you're not gonna have all the shares that you want for a trade, but like it, that that's gonna be that's gonna stay a work in progress. But as long as I'm making the right decisions, as long as long as I'm in the trade, uh, I hopefully will get better at uh, at uh, kind of uh, sizing in that trade as well. But uh, yeah, nice little fade off of uh, off of that morning structure right now on Walmart. Like I said, I'm looking for those 175 and change. Uh, some interesting price action in the pre-market. We're only about 40 pennies away from that. So uh, let's see how far it can get with that. Um, Amazon, nothing too crazy. I'm looking at that 167. I know we were talking about that 167 um, uh, a little earlier today. I think Sean, uh, Sean had mentioned it. But uh, yeah, um, people talking about Tesla. I am looking at the volume, volume leaders on, uh, on the day here. So uh, let's take a quick look at those volume, volume leaders on the day. I know AMD, I was watching as well, that it just feels like yesterday we were at 180. Actually, we were just at 180 yesterday, but uh, a little bit of a failure to follow through. Triple top, it would seem, through 180, once in the pre-market, once in the opening hours, uh, opening session on Thursday, and once again uh, for that double whammy in the opening session on AMD through that 180, a little bit of a failure to follow through, gets a little sold off. Coming in today, we sell off pretty much to the lower end of uh, what seems like this, uh, okay, yeah, the earnings, earnings kind of low, earnings reaction low in and around this 160. We're only about three points away from that, pulling off of 172. So we've came quite a distance, almost, uh, almost 10 points here since the open on something like AMD. That's absolutely wild. Is this doing a little bit of Arvo? Not Nothing too crazy, but AMD heavy to the downside it would seem uh, and uh, yeah people talking about Tesla as well Tesla I did kind of have it on watch last week for the retest of that 200 wasn't necessarily um, involved in it because that 200 test came in going into the close and uh, after hours that that uh, that price was kind of dealt with there a bit of a wash on Friday but pulling back off of that since then on, on Tesla, but it would seem that, uh, yeah, this earnings reaction high, we couldn't really get that far. We're pretty much well within an inside, uh, well within the range of earnings day one or that earnings range on Tesla as of right now. So hasn't really gotten too far, but has provided some decent uh, decent uh, chop and some consolidation uh, for, uh, for potential uh, opportunities, right? I have no idea how you might want to play those, but I'm sure there are players who do capitalize on Tesla moves like that. But uh, yeah, nothing too crazy. Here comes 175 and some change here on Walmart. Oh boy, what are we doing in and around here? 175.30s coming in on Walmart. And uh, yeah, okay, so I, I am gonna be watching the tape in and around this area. So far it has slowed down a little bit. Um, 
You can see there was a bit of an interesting consolidation there in the pre-market, and we made it right back down into that area right there. And uh, yeah, the earnings earnings action goes much lower. If you guys uh, if you guys see it here, let me pull it in uh, so you guys can see a little bit better there. You, here's Walmart on my P Pro chart there, but uh, you can see the pre-market action a little bit better here on the trading view right there. So you can see that interesting consolidation, but. Um, not as interesting as some of the prices that we've come from, 168 being those lows, and we come all the way into 181. Again, all-time highs for Walmart, very, very strong. It's been on a significant run-up for quite a, quite a while there. Um, here, let me take that off. Let's take a look at the weekly and uh, take a quick assessment of where this thing has, it has been coming from, right? So take a look at this. We've been we've pretty much uh, pretty much <laughs> Walmart has only caught a bid since uh, this is a pretty pretty sideways action here from 2000 to 2012. Walmart pretty much went sideways, so that's that's pretty that's pretty wild. But uh, in terms of breaking a consolidation range, oh boy, is that a consolidation range lasting Ooh. for years on end? Almost a 12-year consolidation sideways on Walmart, and then you finally break out of this. What, what's the low of this consolidation? 45, roughly, give or take a few points. And then what is that? 60s, 70s being the high, so you do step up. So about a 20 to 30 point range on Walmart. And then when you break out, you do about 150 points off of a 12-year range break. Absolutely crazy uh, move on Walmart there. But yeah, getting to, uh, getting to, almost, uh, getting to all-time highs and uh, taking a little bit of a breather, it would seem, on the day as we pull back into that 175 on Walmart. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Home Depot was the other name that I was looking at as well. It was pushing 52-week highs here. You can see that we haven't traded these prices since 22s, um, and we came into these when just the beginning of uh, or at the end of uh, end, the end of last year. Look at this November, December, January. We've been trading above this 340 area where uh, we pretty much held below that since uh, March of 22, right? So uh, we've held below some of those prices since, uh, underneath 340 since then. And for the past couple of uh, few months, we've been, we kind of broke back above and pushing towards some 52 week highs on Home Depot. And uh, yeah, earnings doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like earnings really took us, uh, took us past those levels very far. We did kind of catch a, a little bit of a bid after a nice little wash to the downside there. So we did kind of clip the lower end of, uh, of some of these lows here in and around that 350 and then popped right back into some of these highs there. The high, that 52 week high being 368 there on, uh, on Home Depot. So um, Definitely something to, something to keep, keep an eye out for, but off of earnings hasn't really caught that strong of a reaction if you were looking for that 52-week uh, break. But if you were looking for the long off of 350, oh boy, did you get that. Uh, and uh, maybe not right off the open, but it was definitely, uh, it definitely hovered over that and caught a bid above that level after already testing it in the pre-market here on Home Depot. Yeah, I mean, a lot, all those, those retailers, uh, certainly stuff to talk about there. And it's interesting too how they reacted to earnings because they both did beat, um, in terms of earnings for sales and, uh, yes, for earnings for share and sales. But with Home Depot, it got tricky because they actually had a 2.9% year over year decrease for sales. So a little bit of funkiness there. Also funky is Nvidia. Lots of people, um, talking about this one. Understandably, A, it's Nvidia. B, it failed 700, C, it's down 6%, and D, it goes into earnings after market close tomorrow. Sorry for all the excitement here, but I mean, man, what a look. NVIDIA, fascinating. We had all this chop and churn here around that 718. Certainly not as insane as that Walmart consolidation range that we saw Obi just brought us. But, but you know, definitely of interest here. We fall with that viciousness right at, at 9.40 p.m. Or 9.40 a.m. It is not 9.40 p.m., I apologize. Uh, falling really intensely here. Then we kind of get into this 690 and then slowly peter off. I am interested though, and I want to say why I'm interested in this. I like this little long scalp earlier. I think the long right now in NVIDIA may be wrong. However, what might not be wrong is going to be the short. If we fail this 683, I'm going to take this, this short. We're going to see what we can do at 680. Why 683? I'm going to draw it out here. Uh, my attempts at drawing trend lines are sometimes 
of questionable caliber, but that's okay. Uh, you don't learn anything unless you practice. So there we go. I like this. We had this bounce off 683. That was the area also I was kind of playing the long, right? If we fail this, that's going to be resistance becoming su support becoming resistance. Sorry. And so, and look, we kind of get to 683, and then NVIDIA has a little bit of a panic attack. So I want to watch us get to that 683. If not, I'll even take 68250. And then if we decisively break above 683, I'm going to say sayonara and get out of this. But I think, you know, um, talk about chips with the dip, as Obi says sometimes, it's going to be chips with the rip that we're going to try to short here. So I, I, I don't mind this look at all. I think that NVIDIA seems to be struggling with this level. I think it was an earlier level intraday of interest. So that's what I'm going to try to be getting in here. Good morning, Eddie R. I'm asking where Sharif is today. Sharif was sick, unfortunately, today. But thank you so much to Sharif for putting together our little lesson PowerPoint. Much appreciated. And thank you to Obi for filling in and um, giving some great analysis there with uh, the breadcrumb of Walmart. <laughs> Uh, I just love the way you worded that. It's just, yeah, I, I, mean, yeah, I really enjoy that. It's like, it, like I don't, I, I don't have what I'd like to have on, and it's at, like it's absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna call it a breadcrumb. Um, but yeah, like uh, like I said, I'm, I've been getting uh, trying to do a little bit better with uh, with decision making, but at the same time, really uh, putting on uh, the the risk the the trade deserves at the same time. But uh, you know, like I said, it's a it's a it's a work in progress. Um, futures coming into these lows. Oh boy, look at that! ES just teleports down to down to some fresh lows. And uh, yeah, you were just talking about uh, that uh, uh, Nvidia support turning into resistance, and then the, the futures break lows. It's definitely uh, definitely an interesting look there. Um, I would uh, I would say, but uh, yeah, let's see how far we get. 17.5 on the NQ, still relatively high or low. We did kind of wash uh, below that 17.5 and then kind of uh, rip right back up. Uh, when when is this? So at uh, in and around 10.30 it would seem uh, we did that. So we're coming right back into that 17.5. So I'm curious to know what we do in and around these levels here. Um, on uh, on the day, yeah, wow. Uh, Alphabet pulling back in, Softy pulling back in as well. Amazon making fresh lows. It would seem like the sells are on and fresh lows on the spy as well. Uh, and Nvidia obviously kind of uh, uh, winding up for that fresh low um, test as well. So it would seem that uh, we're taking a little bit of a pullback. I'm curious to know what we do in and around the 17.5. It would seem the shorts are definitely uh, definitely in play. Yeah, Sean uh, Sean hitting that uh, dollar club. So What's short, going on? You know, we're short Apple right now, 181.35. We're short a firm on the reload. Short Apple, short a firm. 181.35, it would uh, seem. Sean short is short firm. Apple. That's a that's a nice short, Sean. That's yeah, like... Uh, wait, wait till I tell you this one. We're all right. 168.60. 168 on Amazon. We're short Citigroup. That's pretty much, that's like 20 pennies away from the high. Nice snipe. I am Sean. Nice snipe, Sean. Uh, Citigroup, we have a uh, short at 55. All right, Citigroup, <laughs> short at 55. Arm, we're short yeah. ARM 120.25. All right. So, uh, yeah, 120.25 on ARM. Yeah. Okay, ARM is uh, ARM. I was looking at as well. I know that ARM finally started trading below that uh, initial uh, initial day's consolidation high, 122s. I was interested in that, and it gave you that. It gave you a flush when we finally broke that level right off the open, and it gives you what? What is that? Almost seven points to the downside as we come crashing into 115, and then kind of cons start consolidating 120. We're holding below as well, so definitely a decent look there as uh, ARM takes a wee bit of a pullback. Uh, it kind of uh, was holding that 122 halves uh, for the for the major part of the week last week, and uh, it seems like we're coming right back into those day one prices. So I'm curious to know where ARM goes from here. Again, SMCI taking a little bit of a pullback there as well. So uh, maybe 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 the tech sector is uh, poised for a little bit of a cool down as we have been on a little bit of a ripper for the past few weeks. Uh, I think I was uh, what was it on Nvidia? We've been running up. Uh, for uh, I think multiple weeks on it. I think it was N uh, NVIDIA if I am, uh, yeah, exactly. So take a look at that. When, once we break that 500 mark, uh, this is a weekly chart on NVIDIA and uh, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Five in a row, uh, is that five? Yeah, five, six green weeks in a row ending off in, on a little bit of an indecisive doji in and around that seven, 725-ish uh, level and we're pulling right back in. Again, we tested 1K uh, 1K on Friday, that was huge, and we're we're taking a little bit of a pullback. 680 coming in. Oh boy, where is it? I know I had a level in the 600s. Where to go? 660. All right. Whew. We watch. We watch. We watch.
Yeah, what, what a look there in NVIDIA. Um, also, Magic 8-Ball saying, oh boy, looking for the 688 and 680 break on NVIDIA. So am I. I did bamboozle. I did weasel my way into this short here. 680, 250. Uh, we've been testing kind of that 683 a couple times, but not with any oomph. Uh, I want to get part of this out of that 680 101s because, like I said, I like to sometimes set, especially with these more volatile stocks, my profit taker slightly above the area I actually want it because um, so you get like a you know a couple cents less because you want to be be wary of the spreads there. But yeah, shout out to Sharif there. I'm gonna then leave a piece for the dream should we crack 680. But for now, you know, um, all these trades are are happening. But for now, the the real deal is gonna be with our pal Neil yeah. there. And Neil's lesson of the day over at those desks yonder. Welcome, real deal lesson of the day. We're gonna be talking about bubbles bursting and a good time to talk about bubbles bursting. What is it? How can you profit from it? How do we define it? It's not just any old down move. Um, it's one of those, probably the more often overhyped um, discussion or a topic of point because so many people always want a move up to reverse. Why? Because calling a top is, it's great. You look really smart when you call a top. But not every single pullback is the bubble bursting. And not every bull market means that you're even in a bubble in the first place. So what the heck is a bubble? Before we even get into this, you've got to define what it is. A bubble, a bubble is the way that I'm going to look at it from a trading perspective. It's going to be a ridiculously rapid movement up in price and continued in a group of stocks. It's not SMCI going high and higher and higher and higher. It's got to be a group of names that are all moving up for the same kind of reason. So when you talk about people saying an AI bubble, it's because you have NVIDIA moving, you've got Microsoft at all-time highs, you've got SMCI going crazy, you've got C3 AI, which was making moves, and no one even understood why that stock was going up. So you had a group of names that were all not only going higher, but always defying people's expectations. And every single time somebody called a, called a top, it wasn't that it would break the top, it's that it would break the top and then level up again and again and again. And when that starts to outweigh the fundamentals, that's when you get into a bit of a bubble. Bubbles to me require people calling tops, getting blown out, calling them again, and not over days, over weeks, over months, and over years. The dot-com bubble, when it burst, it wasn't 5% pullbacks. It was names that were moving up in the market in that bubble that went bankrupt, that became penny stocks. It was the, the names that eventually survived, giving gigantic haircuts, and they all moved down together. So that's the thing. It's not about one or two individual names. It's about an entire group squeezing higher for a prolonged period of time, defying expectations. If I don't hear analysts calling tops every single quarter for a year, without it making a top, then I don't think you're in a bubble. And to me, it's got to be that kind of an extreme. So given that you're looking for that kind of a definition, I want to show the difference between when you get a pullback and a bubble bursting. And the best example, I already said SMCI, so that's what I'm going to lead off here today because I think it's providing us with a great opportunity to analyze this quote-unquote AI bubble that everyone says that we're in. And this is, this is something that if you go to a daily chart and come to my daily chart very quickly, in 2023, this was a $90 stock. And you can see when things started to really get out of hand as it broke out in the middle of the year. It was about May. This went from a $90 stock going in the beginning of the year to breaking out at 120. Okay, that's a reasonable 25% upside. Then things started to go crazy in the AI race. And everyone's paying attention to NVIDIA. It's a very similar move percentage-wise. I like SMCI and for obvious reasons as we move on in the chart. And I'm, I'm capping this by not showing you this year on purpose. This went from 90 to 120 to $270. Now, that last move in from 120 into 270 is the exact same amount of time that it took you to even get off of those lows. So we get a 25% move turning into a double up, and then, oh, we got an AI bubble. We have an AI bubble, everybody. It's going to burst. It's going to burst. When it pulled back, it pulled back all of, 20, all of about 30%. 30% move. That's not a bubble bursting at all. 
it actually holds the double bottom, and I'll show you what happens. It then just eventually goes higher, does another big rejection, 370 all the way into 230. But what happens to the higher low? Puts in the higher low, puts in a higher high. Higher, sorry, lower high, puts in a higher low as well. And it continues to go up, 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 and then look at it, look at it holding support, holding support, and then it absolutely explodes. So it's not enough that you pull back. You've got to actually show some serious signs of decay, which you might be seeing happen in SMCI. But remember what I told you, it's not just about one name pulling back, it's gotta be multiple. Because I can look at SMCI and say, okay, great. Down at 700 after getting to 1,000. Has the bubble burst on AI yet? NVIDIA. <coughs> NVIDIA is still in the top end of its range going into earnings. So when you think about the bubble bursting, well, you, if it is happening right now, you're in the first inning. And that's what the chart is telling you. And if you're in the first inning and you've, and you've seen this prolonged upward move not result in lower highs and then low, also lower lows, on everything inside of the group, then that means there's gonna be some trading opportunities because it is those lower highs where you can start to dig in to some potential trades. And when you burst, you don't just pull back 10%, 20%. You pull back a significant portion. A lot of times it'll be in the 30 and 50% range if it's a true bubble burst in the names that got too frothy and you trend back down, not just fall for a couple of days and make support. That's what NVIDIA did when everyone thought the bubble burst and it went to 400 and went to 500 and then to 400. That was not some bubble bursting. That was it leveling off and then making another parabolic move. When this breaks 650, breaks 570, when it starts showing you the stairs to the downside, that's when you know you've got something going. And the earnings are going to be coming. That could be the next catalyst. But it's got to be Microsoft. It's got to be NVIDIA, not just SMCI. I want to see multiple names going. And the first stop would be something like NVIDIA. You've got to define top. So what are we looking for next for this? If the bubble bursts, it's very simple on earnings. If it's anywhere near 740, you can pretty much forget about it. Who cares? If you're breaking towards highs, it doesn't matter. You're looking for the next consolidation level to break down. That would be about this 660. If it fails this on earnings and we're trading 660 to 600, then I want to see that channel hold. And without getting above 660, it's got to bust down 600. Then you can start thinking about this bubble bursting. If NVIDIA is holding 600, yes, that's a good pullback off 740, but that's just what it did last time. It did the same thing, 500 to 400. It couldn't break 400. It's got to be under 600. Sellers under $600. And then you've got a little bit of a bubble burst going on there. And then the dip buying is done. The whole point of big pullbacks that are not the bubble bursting is there are still people buying the dip. That stopped happening to an extent on SMCI. It's unproven yet whether that stopped happening in NVIDIA. It's unproven yet whether that stopped happening in AMD. It's unproven yet whether that stopped happening on Microsoft. But the next shoe to drop would be a broadening from SMCI to those other names. NVIDIA is up next, but it's not about it dropping 20%. I want to see sellers underneath that next 25 to 30%. And then you can tell me about the bubble bursting. Because if that is happening, you are trending to the downside and you're looking for that lower channel to hold where you can start shorting not off the highs, because if you're shorting off highs, then you're guessing. If you're shorting lower highs and breakdowns, then you're participating in the bubble bursting. Everything else is just corrections, pullbacks, and people still buying the dip. And when that's happening, you get a bunch of talking heads talking about, oh, look at this bubble bursting. I'm calling the top. I'm calling the top. It's easy to call a top if you just say every single resistance level on the way up is a top. Eventually, you're going to be right. I would rather be participating in lower highs and signs of weakness like SMCI are now, is now showing you, and I'm watching out for NVIDIA after their earnings, got to hold underneath 25% down. That's it. It's pretty simple. So bubbles bursting are not the same as pullbacks. It's not the same as short squeezes that unwind. It's about a broadening of the group all falling down, making lower highs, not holding support after a 20% pullback, breaking support. So that's the real deal. Be patient because when things are trending to the downside like that in, a, in bursting bubbles, it's not that difficult to join the trend. But if you anticipate it, 
you just run that same trap of trying to guess at the highs of the day. Hi. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, thank you so much, Neil, for, um, and I think something really important to keep in mind, you know, very timely given NVIDIA earnings tomorrow and the SMCI, um, Duke, shout out to Sharif, that we've kind of been seeing as of late. So certainly super timely and really appreciate that lesson, as with all of the lessons in uh, Neil's lesson of the day. And you can catch those. I think they're usually in Instagram shorts and also YouTube shorts, I believe. There you go, barcode or UR, sorry, not URL. Um, you can QR code. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ramin. Um, I apologize for my technological ineptitude there. But yeah, there are QR code. Thank you. Thank you, Obi, for demonstrating how one works. Because um, apparently I don't know. Um, yeah, for now, we're going to get back to the lesson in a second. But uh, what are you looking at kind of right now? How are, how are the trades going um, for you? What are you looking I'm at? I'm looking at this uh, this quadunk in the, in the markets here, 17.5, and uh, kind of broke through fresh lows. Fresh lows on ES as well. Uh, I was talking to Sean about uh, all of his uh, multiple dollar winners on his shorts. Absolutely banger, um, wild. I'm looking. I'm like. I'm. I'm sitting here. I'm waiting. For, I'm like, okay. Well, if things pop, maybe I can get a chance to get short. But uh, there is no sign of uh, any sort of popping right now. And uh, all right. So I, again, like I said, I'm, I'm going to stay patient. I'm getting a little bit of FOMO. I understand. But the fact of the matter is, I don't. I didn't plan on chasing any of these shorts down. I planned on kind of shorting pops. And I'm gonna wait. Day's not done yet. The bell has not rung. There's definitely more opportunity on the board. Sure, we missed out on a few shorts. Bang your shorts. 17.6 fail right into 17.5. Oh boy, is that clean. But uh, you know what? That's all retrospect. And uh, the next trade is what I'm looking for right now. And uh, right now, I don't really see too much. I'm looking at ARM as well. Again, ARM, very interesting, definitely in play. But uh, with SMCI kind of taking a little bit of a breather and pulling back quite significantly off of its highs, 1080 being the all-time highs right there as of last Friday, and uh, pulling back quite significantly, about 300-point drawdown. So we've pulled back about, what is this, 35% off of those highs uh, since uh, since Friday morning, and uh, a little bit of a continuation. Oops, a little bit of a continuation to the downside on SMCI, and it seems like this market might be following in step with some heavy selling coming in on uh, on Friday as well. I remember at the end of the day, I was in that I was in that Amazon short. Um, Again, got a little lucky with the, with the market puke, but uh, it just uh, just a place uh, a place where I felt comfortable selling, and then all of a sudden the sells come in real hot, real aggressive, uh, in in uh, in and around power hour. That was absolutely wild, and it seems like selling is not done yet. <laughs> a little bit of a continuation today happening uh, across the board. It would seem. Again, a lot of these stickers have been running up for running up for a few weeks. We saw uh, what Nvidia has been doing on the weekly, and uh, it, other names very similar as well. So, yeah, a little bit of a breather. We talked about being well within kind of uh, kind of uh, the uh, multi-week range. Maybe we're breaking some of those lows as of right now. Let's take a quick look at uh, at that uh, at that kind of trend there. So, I will put. I think I was looking at it on the NQ on the weekly chart on the NQ. So let's quickly pull that up and see what is going on here. So yeah, we were in quite a quite a strong, strong trend. And yeah, take a look at that. The trend does kind of go sideways and kind of decelerate on the way. So I would technically say that, I, well, I don't know, but I would, I would say that we're still within trend. We're taking a little bit of a pullback, but uh, again, little, uh, if you put a moving average, moving average is not, I don't really have that up here. But uh, okay, yeah. So take a look at that. Oh yeah, this is interesting as well. So you had you had a little bit of a couple month of a pullback, and look at that breakout of that pullback. A very very strong. It seems like we're pulling back a little bit more off of this 18 thou high being 18.121 on the NQs as of right now. Um, but yeah, some strong selling there. Is anybody sitting short? I'm asking these questions. Uh, are you guys providing these answers? I know one person who's definitely sitting a little bit short. He's sitting right to the right of me right now. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'm curious to know uh, if some of you guys in the chat 
are sitting short. Have you guys been swinging from last week? Some interesting action from last week as well uh, on, uh, on some of these uh, leaders. Market leaders took a little bit of an exhaustion. Not really market leaders, but uh, sector leaders, right? We're, ta we're talking about NVIDIA. We're talking about SMCI. And uh, I guess a little bit of action on ARM as well. We can see that it was propped up quite nicely all week. And we are taking a bit of a breather back below that 120. And oh boy, here comes Walmart. 175 and change back in again. I don't know if it's going to get to 175, but it seems like the cells are definitely on board. Why do I not have enough? I got to get better. I got to get good. Don't and say get. that. Yeah, we're, we're learning. We're learning every day. That's what here at um, how to trade. But yeah, no, I mean, congrats. Oh, there, there we are. Or there. Yeah. Uh, imagine <laughs> Obi's face is there. I said that and then I was like, oh, no. Um, yeah, um, sorry guys, that, that was... It's like, it's like if, I went to, if I went to the gym for like five years straight, maybe I would look like that. Five years straight. Yeah. No, but yeah, no, seriously though, thank you so much to Obi for, for being here and I uh, hope you get better soon. Sharif, shout out to Kyle Burdett, 199 Super Chat. You know I've been short, shout out to Sharif, damn it. So uh, that's, I, I tried there, but yeah, yeah, shout out to everyone. Shout out to um, to OB and Sharif, uh, both of you here. Market's Always definitely dumping here. it right now. Oh yeah, the market agrees with you there, Patrick Lang. Why? Uh, um, what am I saying? Kyle Burdett. I am so sorry, guys. My brain is <laughs> everywhere apparently Who's today. That? Um, a different viewer. Yeah, that is someone else. Oh okay. Um, there we go. Yeah, I because I think I saw a comment yeah, there, I and then the that's I when I got Patrick yeah, Lang, yeah, my brain got twisted. But thank you, thank you to everybody in the chat. Yeah, uh, shout out to Bears versus Bulls there as well. Also, I what, we're gonna get back into the lesson, but I want to talk quickly about this Nvidia short. I am now out Nvidia, and I might have left too early, but I do want to explain my reason for leaving because I did have one. So I took out part of that uh, profit there, six eighty one, so about a uh, dollar fifty in the money because it got in that six eighty two fifty because I noticed a couple failures of that six eighty three area which was a pretty established support earlier so I was thinking it could be a resistance becoming support um, which it did uh, and uh, or sorry support becoming resistance which we did end up getting there so I took it short off there took a piece out at 681s then I wanted to hold a piece for the dream here and we fell very low here and I yeah should I was talking to Obi about this as well so shout out um, they're just kind of about holding on. And so I decided to hold on for the time being to this piece instead of giving it up immediately. Why I ended up giving it up at 680s was because I noticed we kept getting into that 679.50 uh, area and then rushing like green, green all the way back into that 680. At that point, I was like, we're just going to have to say goodbye. We did get a little bit lower, but you know what? I had to do what I had to do there for risk management. Kyle Burdett, another 199 super chat. Thank you so much. Adara, it's big Kyle. I can't say it the way Sharif does. But yeah, shout out to you, big Kyle Burdett, um, much appreciated there. And uh, for now, though, we are going to be getting into uh, some trading terminology. Uh, one, what, I guess I said one more time, but we're going to do, you know, we like to do these lessons thrice. Um, so we're going to do trading terminology round duh. So um, some of the, the first terms to kind of talk about here are going to be bid and ask. So the, these ones are, I like this analogy if you're being at a lively market auction and you really want this rare painting. And so you're gonna see that the paddles flying all, all willy nilly, right? So the bid is gonna be the highest price anyone's willing to offer, hoping to win the painting. The ask is the lowest price the seller is willing to accept. And the difference between them is going to be the spread. So in the world of day trading, instead of these paddles, it's all gonna happen electronically. So instead of that dramatic moment in the movie where someone rushes in with their paddle, you're just gonna type it in and that's going to be the bid. So this is the highest price you're willing to pay for a stock security or other asset, and it does represent buying pressure. So on the flip of that, the ask lowest price someone's willing to sell, which will be representing selling pressure. Then you've also got the spread here. So it's gonna be the ask minus the bid. This is basically the cost of doing business. So the tighter spreads are gonna indicate a more liquid asset. So you've got more buyers and sellers fighting here, actively participating and making it easier to enter and exit positions. So the spread can really vary depending on the asset, its liquidity and the market conditions. And in order to, uh, understanding bid and ask uh, relationships or dynamics can be really crucial for calculating potential profits and losses and for understanding also maybe where you want to enter the trade because sometimes with things that are spreadier, you do have to be, kind of be a little bit trickier with kind of weaseling your way into and out of your trades and getting profit exactly where you want it there as well. And some, some trading platforms are actually let you see the order book, which will display the different buy and sell orders at various prices and give you a little bit deeper insight into market sentiment. Now you had a fun analogy earlier too about waiting in line for things yeah. with regards to the bid and the ask as well. 
Yeah, sure. I can uh, I can cover that on. Uh, let's pull up a ticker so we can uh, we can kind of look at look at the book while we're looking at the bid ask and the spread. And uh, if you're gonna ask me which ticker might have a spread, I, there's only one that's been uh, kind of on my mind most of the weekend, and that's SMCI here. So let's take a quick look at SMCI and look. Let's take a quick look at what the spread on this ticker is right now. So I'll pull it up for you guys here. SMCI on the NASDAQ. So you can see right here about a point of a difference, almost two points right there as the, as the bid is sitting at 119 and a dime and the ask right there, the level one is pretty much uh, 721. So it's like that's a two point spread and that is the best bid and the best offer. Now you can see who's standing in line further behind the best bid and the, uh, the best offer and take a look at this. The best bid right now is at 1975, and then okay, I think we're got, get, getting a little bit of a, a little bit of a glitchiness right here as uh, as the it's it's showing me that the bid is a little bit higher than the level one. But yeah, I think I think uh, if you look below the NSB right there, um, 119.62. So it's almost the next guy in line is standing only about a couple pennies away as of right now. But uh, you can see that the spread is quite aggressive. And now we're gonna be, we're gonna be going on to talking about uh, market orders and adding and removing liquidity. But as you can see, this is, a, this is a prime example of if you were to hit the market order, you would be paying for as of, well, right now, here you go. The, the spread kind of closed up a little bit for a second. And then now look at that. It was a 60 cent spread and all of a sudden it goes to a two point spread right away. So that's the type of, uh, of uh, I guess, uh, uh, buffer or like uh, space you have to give to, to really be trading this name at times where because that because that spread can be cl it can close in it can open up and that can mean different things and uh, yeah are, are definitely one to watch if you're curious about uh, what a spready ticker looks like and how the bid and the ask can look very different in terms of how liquid or illiquid a ticker uh, can or cannot be so we got an example of SMCI here let's take a a quick example of something that has a much tighter spread and right away I can think of the spy so the spider that trades on the Amex I know for a fact because it's an ETF it's gonna have a pretty pretty tight spread it's pretty efficient right so let me just uh, pull up the spy on the Amex right here Okay, there it is. So right there. So you can see the spread is only about a penny. It's only pretty much always only going to be about a penny. If it, if it gets to anything more, that might be interesting. But um, so only about only about a penny uh, on uh, of a spread on on the spy, and you can see how liquid it is. There's a lot of size trading at every single price. O twos, O ones. Oh, the holes, 99s, 98s, 97s, and then the same thing on the other side of the book, 99s, O's, O1s, O2s. So it's a pretty liquid book, and it looks distinctly different from that of SMCI. So I think that's definitely something to keep in mind, depending on how and what you're trading. Again, just a little, uh, just a little uh, introductory on bid, ask, and spread. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Obi, for going over that because I think SMCI is a really fun example to use as well. Yeah. A, super timely, and B, very vibrant and very emblematic of what we're talking about there today. So much appreciated on that uh, for giving us that little walkthrough. And also with regards to market and limit orders as well because those are going to come into play in a couple slides. Um, but for now, we're going to talk next about long and short. So these are two different sides of the trading coin. Imagine you have a seesaw. Right? So on one side of the seesaw, you have traders who believe an asset's like price are ri going to rise. So those will like be the bullish guys. traders. Uh, and then on the other yeah, side of the seesaw, you're going to have tr people that will think it that is going to fall. So those will be bearish. So long and short are the different ways you can put yourself on this little seesaw of trading life uh, and then try to profit from your chosen direction. So going long is the classic buy low, sell high approach, or I guess buy high, sell higher, right? You purchase an asset hoping its price will increase in the future and this will allow you to sell it for a profit. It's like buying a ticket on a rocket ship that you might think will be heading to the moon. And, you know, we, I think there's even an animation for that, right? Like, you know, AMC to the moon. If you go long, you see only potential upside and you want to prepare yourself for that rocket ship up. Also, too, I want to add, too, to this the second kind of go around of the lesson because the nice thing about us repeating it is we can add little pieces of color, right? 
I think one thing too is people are gonna have different reasons for going long or going short, right? So maybe you see something technical. You're, you're at a key level of resistance or support. You really wanna get involved. You, you see potential upside or downside for a combination of technical or fundamental reasons. There's lots of different reasons to get into a trade. You just have to make sure that you have your reasons for entering that make sense for you, which I think is pretty key. Going short is gonna be the opposite of the long. So this is the sell high, buy low uh, approach. You're gonna borrow an asset from your broker and immediately sell it because you think the price is going to decrease later, then you'll buy it back at a lower price uh, and return it to your broker and po pocket the difference. So this would be like you buy a, a rare comic book or something like that, you sell it then and you'll buy it back later for cheaper. So this is gonna be pure profit, but it is a little bit sometimes of a riskier um, thing to keep in mind. So some differences between longs and shorts, uh, profit uh, or direction, sorry. So longs, you're gonna be betting on the price going up. Shorts, you're betting on them going down. The initial action also is gonna be a buy in long position or a sell in a short position. And that's really key to remember, because as someone who, you know, like if I short a lot and then I try to buy, I always press the wrong key. Not even in like a fat finger mindset, just because I, I'm so used to, to doing one or the other. You've got to like put yourself back into that mode, right? So I think that that's kind of interesting. And maybe just a me thing, but just in case anyone else does that as well, make sure you're in the, the right mode for whatever trade you're entering. Also worth noticing, uh, noting, sorry, profit and loss. So you're gonna be getting profits differently. Uh, from longs, you're gonna profit. If it goes higher, you're gonna lose. If the asset goes below your asking price. For shorts, it's gonna be the opposite. You're gonna be profiting if it goes down and losing money if it goes up above your initial price there, or your price of entry. So going short is gonna be involving borrowing, so it does carry a little bit of extra risk, like margin calls, potential and limited losses, and not all assets are available to short. Make sure you contact your broker for details. Sean and Neil talk a lot about locate, so that's where that's going to come into play as well. And make sure, you know, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but make sure that you do choose your long and short positions based on your analysis and risk uh, tolerance. And, you know, maybe sometimes you want to combine long and short positions in different assets. For things like Paris trading, there's a lot of different ways to, to navigate the market landscape through, through longs and shorts. I mean, yeah, I guess too, like, one thing is what well, we talk a little bit about are long bias and short bias. I guess how do you think those biases kind of develop in traders? Um, that's a that's a good question. I mean, I I, I feel like my uh, my bias is uh, can be dictated by uh, I guess confluence in a certain direction uh, or not, or just the way, like I, I like using technicals. That's kind of at the point where I am in, in my journey right now. I, I give a strong weight to a lot of different kind of technicals. And, uh, of, and of course, like that includes a volume, that includes like uh, things like, uh, things like uh, uh, pri uh, price action and structure and how the candles look uh, on, the, on the chart there. And of course, uh, if you get that confluence with a catalyst as well, that's, uh, that's always gonna give a little bit of a, uh, of a push towards, uh, towards the bias. But yeah, long and short, I, th I think I truly believe in being able to, to uh, trade both ways. And you do have to be a little flexible. And um, again, I, 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 love the, I love this quote in uh, I, I, again, um, uh, one good trade. It's just like uh, 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 the, the author uh, uh, Mike Bellafuri is talking about how like he's at the end of the day he's a trader. You can remove you can remove my charts. You can remove the news. You can remove CNBC. You can remove pretty much everything else. Give me a level two and a book, and I will be able to you know piece together some uh, some monies from uh, from that. So I really take inspiration uh, in that, and I'm like, yeah, like if I, like that's that's if I if I want if I want to aspire to be a trader, I have to be that flexible and that adept and adaptive enough just to be able to be like, all right, if it's weak, I'm going short. If it's strong, I'm going long. And of course, uh, different different uh, kind of confluencing factors as well. But yeah, very important to kind of have both sides of the uh, both sides of the coin and be able to kind of participate both in longs and shorts because the market isn't always going to go up, market's not always going to go down. I think it's uh, it, it's a good skill to have to be able to uh, be flexible in both ways. And again, um, it, it goes to one of my favorite quotes, uh, be like water, right? And so it's like being being flexible and kind of if the trade is going one way, I don't want to stay too stubborn. But then I find myself doing that often as well, right? It's like, okay, if I do have a bias one way or another, what are certain things that really negate that bias altogether? Like having like, okay, if I'm, if I'm looking for the long and I'm, my bias is I have a very strong bias for the long, what are all of the if-then statements that if this happens, I have to, no matter what, 
toss that long bias out the window. So it's like kind of a little bit of a rant, a little bit of a tangent, but uh, definitely good to consider both sides of the uh, both sides of the trade. No, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Like you know, we've got like some Bruce Lee in there. We have some one good trade, like, like all the different influences there, because I think, you know, it's it's part of a healthy, balanced trading diet. We're going to have influences. We're going to pull from different things and no two traders are going to be alike. So I appreciate, I really appreciate that perspective there. Thank you so much as always, Obi. Also, sorry, it's worth noting here because I saw someone here ask about, um, yeah, tw 214 Slugger asking is FOMC today. FOMC is tomorrow. However, we did get some uh, bill auctions earlier. Sorry about that. 11.30 a.m., 5.23%, uh, percent, uh, 5 percent versus previous 5.23% percent versus um, the, the, that's for the three-month bill auction, six-month bill, also 11.30, uh, 5.1% versus the previous at 5.065%, so slightly higher. We're getting the 52-week bill at 1 p.m., so we're going to stay tuned for that for you guys. Um, Mac Jones, 199 Super Chat, thank you so much for your fifth Super Chat in the live stream. Mac Jones, Mac Jones, the one and only. Um, yeah, shout out to Mike Jones um, and uh, rap in 2004. Uh, Candida Oris outbreak starting, uh, scared face, stay safe fam. Yeah, thank you so much for um, the, the support there uh, and, and letting us know there. Uh, much appreciated. Also too, I'm gonna take a brief pause for the lesson because we have a, a little bit of a move up here in the market, I'm gonna pull up the cues because I'm seeing yeah, on my side charts here some mentions as well. A little bit of a reversal to the upside uh, for some of these some of these markets. A lot of these NQ names as well getting a nice push. Still generally higher, uh, lower highs and lower lows for the cues, but certainly worth knowing we are seeing a bit of a, a return to upside movement. So yeah, I just wanted to do a quick interruption there, but now we're going to get back to business here with the lesson, getting back to um, margin and leverage. So this is kind of ways that you can potentially amplify your trade. So it's like having a financial superpower of controlling a larger position than your, your, your capital would normally allow. So this is a trader that day, uh, sorry, margin is a tool that day traders can use, but make sure you use it very carefully. So what is margin? It's kind of like a loan from your broker. It's uh, you can deposit a minimum amount. Usually it's gonna be about 25 to 50% of the position value that, and that's your margin. Then you borrow the rest to control a larger position. So it's like using a lever to lift a heavier weight or like you get your pals to help lift the weight for you. Cause you're like moving a couch into your house. I don't know. But I think, you know, there's, it, there's a lot of ways you can look at it. But it's just basically getting an extra helping hand to get yourself into this position. Now there's also leverage, which you can think of as a magnifying glass. So this is the borrowed portion. Uh, that's what's represented by the leverage and it magnifies your potential profits if the price moves in your favor. However, it can also magnify your losses should the price go against you because leverage is a double-edged sword. It can work in either direction. So really some things to keep in mind there. Now, of course, shout out to Margin Call, which I love that. Thank you so much, Sharif, for putting this together, putting this poster in. And Obi and someone yeah. in the chat as well shouting out Margin Call earlier as well. Things to keep in mind here. Margin requirements are really important. So they can really vary on the asset and your broker. You also want to keep in mind margin calls. So this is your account value falling below the threshold due to losses. You might get a call or as Obi mentioned, you might get a little email being like, hey, you know, keep keep this in mind. Get, get your stuff together. You know what I mean? Also worth noting, as we kind of mentioned here earlier too, higher leverage can also result in higher potential returns and losses. So this is where risk management might really come into play because maybe you feel a little bit better about a position. You want to take slightly higher leverage. If you, maybe if you're not feeling as good about a position, We'll be a little bit careful about your leverage, right? And this is also something you can see there's certain ETFs that are going to be leveraged, like three times leverage, 10 times, right? So there's different ways that you can, again, always with caution, but there's different ways you can find elements of leverage in the market at, you know, as a whole, right? But it's also worth noting, it's really important to have a deep understanding of technical analysis and discipline to avoid emotional training. So maybe instead of margin, some alternatives you might consider would be focusing on smaller positions that you're funding yourself uh, or considering paper trading to practice leverage without um, risking real money. So yeah, Eric Lenouville, you cannot uh, tag OB, but if you want to tag me with a message for OB and we can kind of pass it on here yeah. in the chat, OB's all good with that. So yeah, I mean, margin and leverage is certainly, certainly an interesting uh, one for sure. Do you ever trade like the leverage ETFs or anything like that in, um, in the day trading life? Or? Yeah, I, th I think uh, I'm just trying to remember uh, uh, an example of one. I, I guess, yeah, uh, uh, TQs is, uh, is one uh, for sure that we participate in every now and then. But uh, yeah, no, definitely uh, levered, uh, levered, uh, 
vehicles are a decent place, I think, to look for uh, look for trades. There, a lot of them are very liquid, uh, and uh, yeah, the liquidity in is uh, the liquidity is one of the things that kind of draws people in towards trading those uh, trading those. Um, vehicles here it would seem like we are taking a little bit of a of a stronger pullback here on uh, on the markets but uh, okay so but yeah uh, margin requirements yeah for sure different kind of brokers depending on who you're with is going are going to give you different kind of margins uh, we kind of talked about how crazy it can get you can have like a 2x margin a 3x margin like some brokers will be like oh you uh, you deposit 500 bucks we'll give you 4000 right or if you have a crypto broker you might be like they might be like you deposit 50 bucks and we'll give you 10,000 and uh, oh. you know so hey, it's it's all over the place and uh, yeah like, like I said it can be uh, it can be an interesting uh, interesting place for sure like you said it's a double-edged sword so if you <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are kind of uh, uh, if your if your cash position is is uh, is uh, nominal relative to the margin that you're getting, you got to watch out for that because once that cash amount is uh, if you draw down that cash amount, then that is uh, you're pretty much going to be done on that uh, on that account there. But uh, yeah, they do give they do give you some uh, some opportunity to really push a lot more into a trade where you might not have been able to with uh, with just your capital alone. So it gives you like an extra leg up yeah. within reason. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for thank you for going over that. Also, yeah, so Eric Lenouville wanted to thank you for sh uh, for showing him TSLQ very profitable today. So yeah, thank you for that chat um, Eric Lenouville. Also a couple uh, mentions here that I find kind of interesting in the chat with regards to to margin we're just talking about what i want to bring up james dell saying tqqq is a top five volume leader daily so certainly a more popular leverage example but also special underscore k you mentioned crypto margins briefly and so i think this is an interesting chat here as well be extra careful if you get into crypto leverage it's super popular and can be oh, really yeah. easy to lose a lot of money fast so That's i was not aware it's a great business model yeah, <laughs> yeah. I if you're the broker, the, if you're the broker, it's a great business model because yeah. it's like it's very easy for most of your clients just to get clipped out, and you're like, oh, okay, well, there's an account, there's an account, there's an account, and uh, with the way the statistics kind of lie, uh, the brokers are definitely winning big on the on on those off those rules. But uh, if you know what you're doing and you're you're very precise with your trading, it it works in your favor. So it's a win-win. I, I would say it's a win-win for the brokers, regardless, right? Most people most people will get uh, will get clipped and the account will get shut down and they get to keep whatever uh, whatever uh, kind of deposit that, uh, that that was made but if if you are kind of that uh, the, the smaller percent of traders that actually make money they're making money for you as well and you're gonna take a cut of that as well so uh, being the broker it's it's uh, it, to me that's like a win-win for sure and those businesses are quite hot in this day and age so yeah. for good reason makes sense yeah, no, certainly. Yeah, always lots of things to consider with regards to, to any of these topics, right? Also, though, the last but not least for this lesson right now is going to be order type masterclass. How can you speak the language of trading? So lots of different order types to talk about. And um, shout out to Obi for going over some of these in our chat on bids and asks there. But um, market orders, these are going to be the now or never type orders. These will execute immediately at the best available price. So sometimes if you want to kind of snap up that liquidity, that's what you do. Press that market order, get in and get out. These are really good for capturing a really fleeting short-lived opportunities, but you should be careful as well about potential price slippage because it might fill at a slightly different price. Limit orders. These are going to be the more patient negotiators. You have a price in mind and then you just kind of sit and wait. These are going to be the guys in, in the metaphorical line that Obi was talking about. They're going to be the ones kind of just chilling, right? They're not going to be moving right away, yep. but they're ready. They're ready to strike should they strike. This is going to be when you specify a desired price or a limit to buy or to sell, and it will only execute if the market reaches uh, your limit, ensuring that you get your desired price or better. So this is like setting a little boundary or buffer for your trade. Then you're gonna get stop loss orders. These are a little safety net. You're already in a position, and uh, this is if you wanna automatically sell your position or liquidate your position. If the price falls below a specific level, stop loss, loss price or above if you're in a short, because this can go either way. This can flip flop here, right? Those limit any potential losses should the market move against you. It's like setting a self-destruct timer to protect your capital and keep it safe. Then we're going to get to um, stop limit orders. This is when you've got a little bit of caution and a little bit of flexibility. It's like a stop loss order, but with an added limit condition. And it'll trigger a market order to sell only if the price 
falls below your stop loss level and reaches your desired or specific limit price. And it's like a two-step safety net, gives you a little bit more control over the execution price. Last but not least, this is a funky one as well. Trailing stop limit or, or stop loss orders, sorry. Trailing stop loss orders. I hear Neil talk about these ones a bit as well. These are gonna be dynamic protection. So this is, uh, it'll adjust its stop loss level automatically as the price moves in your direction. It's like a stop loss trailing behind a rising price if you're in the upside, if you're in a long. Walking in profits while protecting against sudden reversals, because those can be so common in these markets. Mother market does like to, to use an obism there. Mother market will certainly uh, teach you a little bit every day, right? But always make sure to choose the order type that best suits your trading strategy and your risk tolerance. Consider combining maybe different order types for more sophisticated strategies and make sure you're using different order types in a simulated environment before risking real capital. So now you can go forth and conquer the market one well-placed order at a time. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, it, it, like we mentioned before, it's definitely important to consider uh, what kind of uh, orders you're using to kind of interact with the market to get you in and out. Uh, different, uh, different, or, different types of orders giving you different types of priorities, right? Whether you want to stand in line or you want to, you want to just uh, grab everything that you can see, right? So it's like, it's like the, the, those types of orders give you the flexibility of managing your aggression as well, right? You want to be aggressive and remove liquidity. You want to, you can use market orders and there's different types of market orders. There's marketable limit orders that we like to use as well, right? I, I give it a, like a range. Uh, within the next 15 pennies, I want anything and everything, this is my size, and it'll market within those 15 pennies. So there's, there's multiple different kind of uh, levels of aggression that you can really use with those market orders. And then uh, limit orders as well, right? Just straight up limit orders standing in line. And uh, <laughs> was it, I, I just, we are kind of bouncing a little bit here, and it's funny, I was just reading a comment, uh, Lolo in the chat saying, lows are in, Famous last words, definitely heard that one before. I'm kind of watching this. I was watching this, uh, the, the price action kind of slow down and I was like, oh, softy, back through that three, uh, 399 and uh, ES and NQ looking like they're, they're gonna be printing a little bit of a green as of right now. And I read that, I read that comment and I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's pretty funny that uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's timed quite nicely. Uh, you know, famous last words. Okay, the bottom's in, get long, buy low, sell high. And uh, a little bit of a 400 test might, might bring in another quadunk, so I have no idea. But I'll, I'll stay patient. Like I said before, I, find, I have found a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, I guess, um, peace, and, uh, peace and clarity in being more patient for, those, for the trades that I'm looking for. Sure, I can miss a couple points here and there, but uh, something I've really shifted kind of my focus towards uh, as of late is really preserving that mental capital. This is a hot market. If I'm wasting a lot of mental capital and I'm spending a lot of mental capital, sure, I might be up, I might be down, but is that, is that expenditure really worth me carrying over for the next trade in this kind of market, right? It's like, it's like a, that, that's kind of what I was uh, focused on on my weekly reviews last week was just like, when in, in a type of market that gives you such opportunities, do I really want to be aggressively scalping and really exhaust my mental in the, in the morning? Or do I want to play a little bit safer and, and wait for some of these prices to come in and take a bigger chunk off the move in a more, in a more uh, I guess, uh, a patient and relaxed manner and preserve that mental, have more, have more space for decision making, have more bullets in the chamber, right? Where I'll, I don't wanna show up with an Uzi when it's a sniper's market, right? It's like, I'm gonna run out of ammo real quick and I'll, I'll, be left, I'll be left kind of standing in the sidelines being like, okay, well, I might be done for the day, I might not have many ideas, or I might just be physically or mentally exhausted, but there's opportunities galore in this kind of market. Just, to, just a tangent on something I've been thinking over the long weekend, a uh, little, uh, little trip into the, to, to inside the brain of Obi there, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I love. Oh. I always love the vivid analogies that that you bring to the table. And I mean, we had like a couple there. I like, the, you know, the mental capital. I, in all seriousness, I think is really important. That's something I, I, I really take as well. I also like the way you say, "When's the next trade?" I think that's a really good way of being a little less hard on yourself when you're trading, right? Like, you know, maybe something didn't go as you wanted it to. That's okay. That trade's over. What's next? What's next on the horizon, right? So I think that's a really healthy way of preserving the mental, uh, as you put it, as you kind of go on your little trading journey. Also, I like the whole mental arsenal kind of um, metaphor there as well, right? Like what <laughs> what kind of weapons are you bringing in your tool chest to yeah. kind of take on the trading day? Because 
And the, you, you said it really well too, because every trading day is gonna be a little bit different. And what you're gonna bring and what the market's gonna bring are sometimes gonna be two different things and they're gonna vary day to day. Yeah. So, so I really like that, that analogy there and it's something I wanna to try to, to take on a little bit more in my trading. So thank you so much uh, for that. You don't, you don't wanna show up to, 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 to a gunfight with a knife. That's true, right? You but know? you also don't wanna show so up to a, a knife fight with a gun. Well, well actually, maybe, you might have a little fun. bit of an advantage, but like, regardless, you don't, you don't want to show up with the wrong kind of kit, right? Yeah. You want to be kitted out effectively for the terrain, for the landscape, for the map that you're on, and make sure you've got the, 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 the right tools, the right skill set, and the right mental to kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, tackle that um, specific trade on the day. Now, uh, again, I, I, like, like, uh, I say this often, um, I'm, a, I'm a gamer, I'm like, I like I like I like to give uh, trading a lot of gaming analogies because I'm like yeah it's 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 very much like competitive gaming to me that's how I kind of that's how I kind of view it I like that, and yeah. it's like yeah are, you're, you're you're here to play like this is competitive this is ranked right this is the biggest arena on the planet one can argue so it's like are you really show are you if you show up with the wrong tools to the arena oh you're you're gonna get clapped you're gonna get straight up clapped <laughs> GGs it's gone so it's Woo. like. So you, being, being cognizant of that, of that is something I've been working on. Well, again, not perfect at all, nowhere close to where I would like to be, but uh, the realization is definitely coming in where it's just like, okay, well, you know, this is, if you kind of view it like this, it gives you, it, it poises you a little bit better on kind of tackling your day. And that's what I've found, uh, again, with my limited experience uh, as, a, as a trader trainee. But uh, yeah, with the market, with mother market, we're gonna stay learning for uh, for a very very long time, and that is that is that, that's what I love about this game. Uh, and uh, things are going to continue to change, and that adaptability that is something that uh, I'm realizing that I really have to work on um, over time for longevities, right? It's like exactly Rob Rob EV. You don't want to be hiking in stiletto, straight up. You don't you don't want to be hiking in stiletto. Yeah, although show it to me, just saying. She's done it. Also, She's I have, you know, I used to like walk around in, in heels daily, like, you know, but I mean, also maybe they do get a little muddy, right? That's the one thing they get a little, they get a little muddy, but I mean, it is possible. So shout out. Thank you so much for the interjection there. Um, really fabulous times. Elon saying, hi, Adara. Obi really treats us like Jedi master. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, and I think too, I like all the analogies because I think they bring like a fun, fun kind of thing to the table and they're, you know, they're easy to relate to and understand. A lot of people appreciating the gaming references in the chat here today. So shout out to that. I'm, I, I'm no, I'm no Jedi master. I'm surrounded by, by the masters uh, around me. And that's what I'm grateful for, right? I, I have a lot to learn from those around me and experienced traders um, here on the floor, whether they be, um, in, in person or even like online. A shout out to, uh, again, all the, all the more experienced traders who have been giving me, uh, I guess, advice and, uh, and, and, uh, and perspective over, over the past few years. And I'm really thankful for that, but nowhere, nowhere near, uh, nowhere near any, anywhere close to, to master, I would say. I am uh, I'm a young Padawan and I will stay a young Padawan to the market for a very, very long time. So again, it's, uh, it's just about uh, getting a little bit better every day. That's, what, that's all I wanna do, get a little bit better every Every day, get better. Get, uh, like, take each trade and kind of uh, use that, uh, use that trade to kind of propel me further into the next trade. Do make not making the same mistakes and uh, getting better at the things I'm doing better at. So it's like that's and um, you realize that changes over time as well that's as the market changes. So that le that level of adaptability, a depth of adaptability, is very interesting to kind of live through. I'm finding it's a, it's definitely a learning uh, learning process for sure. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, really appreciate that here too. Um, Mr. Mem saying Obi Long Kenobi. So um, <laughs> nice little pun there. And yeah, I mean, this has been, yeah, this has been fantastic um, today. Really, really fun day, way to start off a, a shortened week here. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Stan Cho. I'd like to think I'm getting a little bit more confident in my trades. And you know, with that in mind, I do want to talk about this Tesla trade because also Tesla's getting rangy in a way that I like. You know, uh, as you said, Mother Market will kind of teach you new things every day. And Mother Market is, is kind of showing me I prefer ranges. And this Tesla was kind of fun. So I got involved in this as a short because I noticed we did have slightly higher lows, which I was cognizant of, but we were still very much like this bottom around this 189.50. And so, but yeah, 189.50 more or less was, was kind of holding up. So I was like, maybe we'll pot, try to play around that, right? So I got short at this 190.25. I watched this touch for a couple times. We couldn't get above it. That's where I ended up getting short here. Then I planned some profit taker. This was about a 30 cent uh, paper because I'm still in the sim here. 
30 cent paper winner here at this what just shy of 190 it got in there because we had some chop and turn earlier so i always like you know i talk about this a lot i like to get out some of my profits in areas where we had previous resistance and support i saw that there got out some there then we fell with the swiftness and i got out of the, around that previous low that one uh 689 kind of area now though what's happening with tesla that i really like that i did not foresee is we're having basically this clean move from 189.20 to 190.20 so if i can keep trying to, to see what we do here this might actually be a clean range and it's actually cleaner i think than at least for my purposes than some of these mag sevens but meta also kind of doing where, where tesla seems to kind of still be weak and a little bit more stagnant meta triple bottomed here so i got really excited there triple bottomed at what uh 467 and change i like this look now we're kind of seeing these stutter steps to the upside Honestly, this whole concept of getting long at the 9 EMA is kind of appealing to me because you seem to be um, riding this area very nicely, kind of like Peloton, like up and down, you know what I mean, to the upside. Speaking of Peloton, uh, actually, let's look at Peton for no reason other than, oh, yeah, this stock, this stock does not want, oh, my gosh, this is, this is sad. I feel very sorry for Peloton. Uh, massive drop here, down 4% in the day. Um, 4.30 bottom of this range, about a 4.35 top. So very rangy, but not in a way that is showing a lot of opportunities there. But yeah, I thought since I mentioned Peloton, I was like, I may as well shout her out. But um, bit of a rough look there for Peloton. Certainly not cycling to the upside and kind of actually much like a Peloton cycling in place right now. Also, um, you can check out uh, actually the second stream. I think Bears versus Bulls can drop that in the chat. I know there's, you can always look at the second stream there. Take a look and see what uh, Sean and Neil are up to. That'll give you a nice uh, little look there. So certainly something worth looking at. Also check out the podcast, really fun podcast this weekend. Some uh, talking about coffee, talking about um, a lot of different kind of trade elements as well. Uh, upcoming NVIDIA earnings tomorrow after the close. So always take a look at that. I see you've entered a trade at Microsoft here. Yeah, I have. I have entered a trade in, in Softy. And uh, yeah, it seems like it finally updated uh, the the uh, um, the quote board, I guess, because I did uh, have to take a position to kind of show uh, sh for some of my older positions the Walmart to kind of pull up there. But uh, yeah, no, a little bit of a long on softy. Let's see how this works uh, here. Um, just kind of testing it out, you know, just kind of uh, a little bit of a ping uh, on top of this or in and around this 400 mark. Let's see if. Uh, if or not, it'll work out. But uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Um, what are you guys trading? I'm looking in the chat. People talking about Peloton and Baba. So let's take a quick look at Baba. Uh, I know that one's been a little bit uh, interesting over the past few days. And uh, let's take a quick look and see if that it will, um, or that looks uh, interesting <laughs> at all. But uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, yeah, last week we had earnings. That's why, or the week before that, 7th of February, excuse me, was uh, earnings day one. And yeah, we're a little bit of a, a little bit of a pullback off of that. I see I have, I have that earnings kind of high uh, marked off. We did pull back off of that last week, and we're, we're kind of holding below some of those uh, some of those earnings prices here. It would seem on Baba, but uh, nothing too crazy here. If you had the short off the open, it seems like off of that strong continuation off of the end of day action on uh, on Baba there. These candles are always uh, always kind of uh, interesting to me, Adara, where you find candles that kind of look like they just like a st stair step, stair step, stair step, stair step, straight down, and then coming in the next day, this, that selling has a strong continuation right off the open, right into 72 and some change right there on Baba. But uh, yeah, I don't know how how uh, China tickers are, are are doing right now. Let's take a quick look. I know at, Neo and uh, Xpeng were rough, but that could have been the EV stuff. Yeah, it, it it could it could have been definitely just the EV stuff there. We'll take a quick look at Neo and Xpeng in a in a second there. But I have here um, a le another leverage ETF here, Yin, which is a three X uh, China China bull ETF right there. And we did see a little bit of a a little bit of a pullback there. So let's take a quick look at uh, Neo and see if that's kind of following in step with some of these names as well. So yeah, a little bit of a flush right off the open, it would seem. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a sell-off on some of these uh, China names as the ETF kind of pointing, uh, pointing that out to us as well. Um, people talking about SoFi. I think we did take a look at SoFi as well, right, Adara? Uh, yeah, SoFi, we know, we know that uh, it's been trading as well, holding a little bit of a level right here. 
but uh, pretty much sideways, hasn't really gone too far. I'm gonna take a quick look at some of these volume leaders on the day. Let's see what these guys are up to here. Soundhound AI, huh, okay. So Soundhound holding up quite well, uh, making higher lows back to back, day after day. Now we know that this ticker had some news last week that NVIDIA had a stake, not in, in Soundhound, I think it was RxRx as well, and uh, obviously ARM. So those were the three tickers that NVIDIA took a stake in, and Soundhound AI, uh, oh boy, is it holding up uh, some of those levels there. One of, the, one of the top volume gainers on the day as well in, uh, in US exchanges here on this specific list. But uh, yeah, Tesla kind of pullback right there. We kind of talked about this one, a little bit of a pullback from off of, uh, off of earnings there. Um, Palantir pulling back as well. I'm gonna take this view up off of, uh, off of it. But uh, Palantir, a little, a little bit of a pullback uh, as well into those 20, so continuation from last week. LUNR, I haven't, uh, what is this name again? Intuitive Machines, Lunar. Well, they had a moon lander. Um, oh, or, yeah, it hasn't defense, landed huh? yet, but it's it's heading. They launched it. It's heading to the moon. Really? Okay. Yeah, cool. So, are, are they in works with like NASA or like they're doing their own thing? I, I, you, I you, saw you... something with SpaceX, but I want to make sure. Uh. I want to make sure I'm getting the exact right details okay. here. All right. Um, but it's a that's... cool. It's a really cool story. Oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. I think I think it can definitely catch some traction if that's the case. And I'm seeing right now. What is that? Is that a liquidity trap? Oh boy. Let's take a quick look at an hourly right here. Did we have some strong volume and now we're trading above that after a low liquidity period of a few days? Huh, $5 fails to follow through. Can't really distinctly break down off of five and then rip city right back through those highs. And it seems like we're, we're, we're having a little bit of a, a little bit of an acceleration to the upside after this kind of mechanic there. So definitely interesting on Lunar. Yeah, there you go. Much, much cleaner on, uh, on the day chart there. Uh, shout, out to the, shout out to the guys that play this strat right there. Very, very strong uh, action on, uh, on a multi-day move, pushing, pushing that parabolic past some previous highs as well. So a lot of pressure kind of getting released. What's the float on this thing? I'm curious to know. Um, 15 mil float apparently according to according to trading view here, but a 1 billion market cap. Okay, all right. So you got some, uh, you got some oomph to you. But uh, yeah, definitely an interesting name. Again, I wouldn't have known about it if I wasn't looking at volume leaders on the day. And uh, yeah, Lunar, Lunar going apparently to the moon uh, on, uh, on that kind of uh, catalyst there. But uh, yeah, next ticker right there, Mara. Again, we know a lot of people have been interested in this name as well. Uh, Kind of uh, with Bitcoin holding and pushing past that 50k quite distinctly, we got the fr we got some fresh highs uh, today into that 53 test this morning, which I discovered after coming on to the midday show. And yeah, it seems like we are taking a little bit of a pullback, as you guys know. Bitcoin did pull back off of that 60 uh, or 53 mark uh, from this morning, a high volume candle right there. We've been kind of dwindling in volume since then but catching a little bit of a bid at the lower end of, uh, of this, uh, if you want to call it a consolidation, it's consolidation above this 50K. We're kind of a, a little bit of a stair step above this previous level as well. Um, on the Bitcoin, and yeah, of course, uh, you got some names moving in and around with that. How are you doing on NVIDIA? I know you were trading NVIDIA a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. For you? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we had um, I had a little short here. Basically, took this. We like this is the same area I've kind of been playing all day, more or less. That six eighty two fifty. Um, I've kind of tried to learn that if 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 something isn't broke, why fix it? And right now, this level has been really clear resistance. Uh, with the exception of a, a bit of moves to the upside here around twelve thirty, it's also been really clear support. Also worth noting, we did just get that 52-week bill auction. I'm just waiting to see a number in here so I can give that to you guys. Um, also, yeah, so with Lunar, thank you, James Dell, saying it's, the launch is tied to NASA's Artemis Moon program. I'm also Ooh. seeing here, according to CNBC, That's that the cool. mission uh, for uh, LUNR was launched on a SpaceX rocket. So that's um, pretty cool here too. Lots to, to note there. But yeah, um, once we get that, I'll, I'll get into the thesis of this NVIDIA trade once we get that 52 week bill auction. Uh, but yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, when we wait for the auction, I can just talk about this trade. So I liked basically, I like, I watched it again for that failure of that 682.50. Again, the whole thesis, we gave it about a dollar. And I took less shares this time too, because I, I thought too, in case we give up the ghost, because we've been, NVIDIA has been very much about this level. So I was like, you know, the, Things can always fall off, right? Like the trend is your friend until the end where it, when it bends, but it can always bend. So I wanted to be really cognizant of that. I, I took 
small less shares took it right out at the 681.50 so we took about a dollar here in this um simulator scalp but we seem to be failing now kind of back into that 681 area i also was cognizant too because we did see slightly higher lows uh so that's you know what i mean we initially had that double touch of that 689 or six 79 and some change, then we get into that 680 area, now 681. So I do want to be cognizant of the fact that this could just be a top where we are seeing these higher lows. I don't want to see a flat top break. We are down 617 on the day, but that whole like 683 hold of former support becoming resistance could flip on us at any time. So I do want to be really cognizant of that when I jump around and play around in this range. So that's, that's what's happening here. That's what I'm talking about with regards um, to this trade and to my plans here. Um, with, with NVIDIA. Right now, as long as we hold 681, I, I would probably get involved in the long side, but I might. I, I really want to wait for more for more kind of um, support of these levels and more tests before I get involved in anything right now because this NVIDIA is getting tight. Also tighter ranges. Tesla, oh my gosh. Talk about a compression wedge here. I'm going to draw it out. Um, doo -doo -doo. So this is the top side. This is going to be the bottom side. It is not perfect, but it is a wedge. I think what's also interesting, too, is, you know, we don't want to, like, call moves before they happen. But we had this massive move to the downside starting 11. Oh, I'm on the three-minute chart. Starting 11.48, then coming down into 12.27. So we gave this is about a 45-minute move. Then we start compressing. We're getting tighter and tighter, more coiled in this wedge. Usually these wedges will resolve in whatever direction. Uh, it's a continuation pattern. So that means this wedge could resolve to the downside. I don't want to, you know, make any assumptions here. But if we do continue to have this wedge, I might take a small position and try to kind of get out of this to the downside because this Tesla looks like it could be getting interesting at any moment. Model, why not? I mean, maybe that'll give us reasons why not too. But right now, I kind of like the look of this compression wedge, especially look at all these failed wicks we have in the three minute uh, buyers or yeah, sorry, sellers, overwhelming buyers with the viciousness here. I want to see how this turns out. I'm intrigued. My interest is certainly peaked. Let's hop into the cyber truck, especially after that car show that we had this weekend. Uh, we got to see some photos earlier at the big desk from that? Randy's time at the car show there. But yeah, I guess Randy saw him. Okay. I think the, the, the uh, VinFast truck looked really cool. Uh, there was also, you know, the cyber truck, so lots of things there. Also, 52 week bill auction there. 4.695% versus the previous 4.570%, so higher than the previous. I'm going to put this in the chat so everybody can see that. But yeah, what what a look there um, on Tesla. Lo this market has certainly been nothing short of interesting today, I would yeah, say. It's, uh, How are your it's going? definitely nothing short of uh, of interesting, that's for sure, uh, Tara. But uh, um, with, with, the, with those cells looking a little a uh, little strong to the downside, but yeah, no, the auto show this we this weekend. Did you did you uh, did you uh, end up going to that? I did all? not go. No. Okay, I I, I did get a couple of invites there, and I was like, you know what, I got I got some uh, things to do over the weekend. But uh, yeah, no, I had had some family members that did go uh, to to the auto show, and uh, we're talking about how like uh, they they've got these vehicles that uh, they really went uh, above and beyond because this is the first time it was open after uh, after COVID. Oh, so it's really? the first time it's really like full fledged, you know, um, kind of coming back in. So they, apparently they came in with a bang uh, with uh, with the inventory that they've brought in for t for this uh, this year's show. And uh, definitely interesting stuff to see. I was like, uh, I was curious to know uh, what some of the interesting vehicles were. But I got when, when it when it comes to cars, I've got uh, I've got one love and one love only, and that is uh, that is a Nissan Skyline. For those of you who know, you know. We'll but, uh, but yeah, specifically the R34, uh, uh, the, the, the Nismo, the Nismo uh, edition, the Z-Tunes. And those are, uh, those are quite, uh, quite rare. Okay, wow, yeah. This? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a, that's a the, really that, that, classic. The blue is classic. The blue Skyline is absolutely classic. That is a beautiful vehicle. You can put whatever car in front of me. I will probably, if it costs more, I would probably sell it and buy this one. But uh, oh. yeah, no, the, it's actually crazy, Dara. I was, uh, I was talking, to, talking to a couple friends about this. Um, when we were in high school, uh, which was uh, quite a while back, but uh, this vehicle would sell for around 20 to 30K, right? And it's from 1990s. Now, the, the specific one that I want, the last one that was sold, was sold for more than half a ticket, over 500,000. And that is how rare this vehicle has become. That specific Z2 in one, absolutely crazy, you know. And it just, it's just going to keep on going up. And I think the Fast and Furious movies also kind of made it very popular as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely there, there's, uh, there's that to be said. But, 
that is my favorite vehicle. Skyline's the limit for you, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a that's a really good look. Are you a car person in general? Or you really just like this I, car? Like I, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a car person, but I do I do love that car very much, and I, I have a little bit a tidbit knowledge of uh, cars here and there, but uh, nothing too crazy. I'm not I'm not I'm not like uh, uh, some of my friends. They go crazy, uh, and uh, their knowledge base on uh, on uh, on cars and how to fix them and how they work absolutely crazy. I'm always asking them questions, but uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of a tangent, but. No, I mean, yeah, I think, like, too, with, with the car show, that's certainly um, something of interest. And I think, too, like, we've had, we have EVs on the horizon this week, too, with Rivian and Lucid earnings yeah. tomorrow after close. And then we get Nikola. I'm going to check when Nikola is, i.e. before or after market. Um, but I believe Nikola we do get on um, Thursday. So that is going to be... Um, before market open on Thursday. So we're getting these actually back to back. You get Lucid and Rivian after market close Wednesday, then before the market opens, Nicola says, hold my car keys, and they report. So <laughs> yeah, it's certainly going to be an EV jam-packed nice. week. Uh, so yeah, I think that could be a really exciting. Speaking of EVs, I did get back into the cyber truck here in this Tesla short. Um, Lolo. All right, sorry, I don't, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off there, but yeah, I'm no going to get back to you, Lolo. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Um, I think you get a lot of support here in the chat for that for that car pick for sure. Um, this is a new one for me. I wasn't familiar with it, that Nissan, so I'm gonna have to look into it. I like a Nissan Cube. I like a boxy car, as I have said uh, many times here. So yeah, I'm. I'm kind of weird in that way but that's a very nice looking Nissan but yeah basically this Tesla short is literally just um I like this kind of same level we keep getting into this area we keep failing it if we get uh if we surpass that 190 50 areas so we're going to give this about 30 pennies I'm out but I'm taking some profit uh should this short be successful run that 189.70 going to save a piece for the dream for the lower end of this range that 189.30 area we'll see if this comes to fruition but yeah this market is um has been spicy all day oh, yeah. and um I I like the range so i think i think there's probably a little bit of something for everyone honestly in this in this market today how how go the walmart and the the softy uh they're they're uh, they're working out they're all right um just gonna let it uh we're gonna let them marinate but uh, i want to go back to lolo Oh, I was talking about it. It's all about the skyline and the 86. Oh, buddy, you are you are uh that is music to my ears you are speaking my language right there uh garage definitely has to have the 86 the 86 is the prime vehicle, and you already know where I'm getting that from. You, you might know the type, of, the type of driving, the type of racing that I like, uh, if, if that iconic car is one of my favorites. A mint condition, so the 86 is basically a Toyota Corolla. Oh, right? okay. It's a 1986 Toyota Corolla, specifically that came out in this Panda Torino, uh, Torino color, which is basically like a black and white. Okay. And uh, it's, been fam it's been made famous by, by, uh, by a few, um, uh, TV shows and some uh, some Japanese animes as well. But uh, the one man who really made that vehicle famous is uh, Keiichi Tsuchiya. He is the drift king. So this guy put drifting on the map. So he was a, he was a, he was a, he was a circuit. He I think he raced in circuits. Um, and uh, yeah, no, he pretty much he was so fast that he started drifting every corner, just just for fun. And uh, he put drifting on the map. That, I think that's how the that's how the legend goes. But um, uh, the beautiful. The beautiful uh, uh, thing about Kiichi Tsuchiya is that R34 is a four-wheel drive car, right? Okay. Drifting is usually done on a two-wheel drive, on a rear-wheel drive. Okay. The man, there's a video of him driving a four-wheel drive car and now drifting it. You need some skill to drift it. This guy drifted it like butter. It, you cannot tell it's a four-wheel drive. I'm gonna have to look at this. And he drifts the skyline like it's a two wheel. This guy, he has earned the title of Drift King for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, no. When I when I start talking about drifting, I get a little carried away. But That's so drifting cool. back into the markets here, <laughs> let's see if we can link some of these turns and pull the e brake on some of these shorts here nice. and uh, head in the other direction. But we shall see. I have no idea. We're still holding up on uh, on softy. We're still holding up on the uh, on the wall uh, on the Walmart. But uh, you know what? It seems like we're pretty much sideways right now. Again, what time is it? We are, it's, it's about 1.11, so about middle of the day. Nothing too crazy going on as of right now, it would seem. But yeah, maybe setting up for later, uh, later uh, uh, end of the day trades. And uh, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm really looking for here. Like I said before, I let, I'm trying to be a little bit more patient, let things kind of work in, uh, work into, uh, into the move there. But uh, other than that, I don't have uh, I don't have too much uh, 
too much else to kind of look at or to say. I know I went on a little bit of a tangent about, uh, about cars and drifting and uh, Formula D and uh, the Drift King. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what stocks you guys are trading. If you guys want to talk about stocks, I'm open to, open to everything here. We're just having a good time, right, Adara? Yeah, yeah, I think we are certainly having um, a great time here. And yeah, I, as someone who does not drive, I know very little about the car world. Although, <laughs> There's just like, yes, yes, cars, go well, cars. I want to <laughs> learn more because I was very into cars. And then, you know, I, yeah, I just, I don't drive. But I think, um, you know, like I, I like the Chevy HHRs. I like, uh, you know, a boxier kind of vehicle. So some of those new EV car trucks looking kind of funky. But I need to look into that, um, yeah. that Drift King because that is not something. Oh, yeah. I heard of like Tokyo Drift, which I think was a Fast yeah. and Furious movie yeah. but I don't know about he was actually in that he made a cameo in that that's movie. amazing he, he made a look, cameo in the movie yeah. I'm gonna have to look that up yeah I don't I, what I'm not sure though is if someone should drift into <laughs> Tesla and Tesla is drifting slightly out of my area of interest which is making me a sco chaperone here we might have to be fast and furious and leaving this trade no I'm joking like you know slight exaggeration we're, we're, we're fine here like I said I'm giving this about 190 50 so we're getting about five pennies away from my area of interest. But why I say that is because I like, that's where we have these wicks here of these um, sellers overwhelming buyers. Uh, so we have these failed wicks to the upside. That's where I'm really going to be interested um, in to see to see where we go. We're kind of getting out of my point of interest. So, uh, you know, boo Tesla. No, I'm joking, it's fine. We're just gonna get out here. But yeah, so I, I think like it's certainly been um, a really eventful market, I have to say. Like I said, I do think there's probably something for everyone here. You got a little bit of range plays, although those are starting to get a little bit awry. You had some, um, you know, volatility movements. NVIDIA has certainly kept you entertained if you are an NVIDIA trader, because that one's been um, super, super interesting. I'm gonna get into NVIDIA in just a moment here. I just wanna get out of this um, Tesla there. There we go. Um, but yeah, this um, I'll pull up this NVIDIA because I think NVIDIA has been really interesting. NVIDIA, still super rangy. Why am I not only trading NVIDIA today? I think for the most part, this range has proven fairly fruitful. So this is just something I want to be keeping my eye on because wowie, just kind of continuing around this um, 680 more or less into that 68250, 683 more or less. If we keep rejecting here, I'm going to be interested. Um, Jay Haas, yeah, I totally agree with you, saying Tesla's at its weekly expected uh, low right now. Bounce coming, expected high, 209.82. Time for some long, long options. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of this right now, so we're going to see if this comes to fruition here because this Tesla getting a little bit stressful. Not like mega stressful, but, you know, like low-key, low-key stress. We're not, we're not depressed, la. it's not a mess, la, but, yeah, yeah going to try to work on areas of, of exit there. If you don't mind taking over for me two seconds, I'm just going to hop out of this, this uh, Cybertruck really quickly here. Nice. Uh, Adara with uh, the puns being Bestla. All right. So 400 coming in on, uh, on, on the softy there. Let's see how well it comes in. I'm saying it's, com it's coming in, but it's pretty much been teetering in and around these prices for the past few minutes there. So uh, I am trying to be a little bit more patient here. Whether it works out or not, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, we were kind of uh, uh, teetering sideways here. At NQ uh, still holding on to this, uh, what is this, uh, 15, uh, sorry, 17 half ish area right here are these prices so we were pretty much uh we haven't really gone anywhere in these past uh these are 15 minute candles so how much time is left we just started printing this this uh 15 minute candle right now so the, for the past about 30 minutes we were just uh holding in and around this 17 half and uh just uh, just kind of chopping and churning in and around the, that area so uh yeah let's see where we kind of go from here and uh, things are things are in a bit of a downtrend, right? A little bit of a sell, a little bit of a sell-off there on spy as well. I have no idea when the turn is going to come in, but a lot of these tickers that were having some strong moves last week have been uh, have been kind of uh, cooling off a little bit here. Nvidia, Nvidia, of course, being uh, being one of them there, and uh, SMCI we kind of talk about as well. SMCI definitely cooling off as well. Um, what were some other tickers that were running very very strong last week? I'm Trying to, I'm trying to remember here. Um, well, I'm just take a quick look at uh, some of these, uh, some, some of my list there. Yeah, of course, I guess Disney. Well. Yeah, I think, I think I remember uh, Sean taking a couple of Disney positions last week into the into the end of the day there. And uh, okay, so yeah, no, Disney, Disney was strong, but it is, it's also kind of selling off a little bit uh, as well on the on the day underneath that 110 mark. It would seem just a continuation uh, off of this uh, break of a shelf that we kind of got. Look at that. 
Uh, we talk about that support turn into resistance Adara. This was kind of a little bit of a support on Friday, right? Day low on Friday, held up quite, uh, quite well consolidated. Sure, it's a bit of a chop, but coming in today, you come right up into that level, and that support area level kind of starts to act like a resistance, and uh, we kind of slam right back into the downside on this on Disney, I was gonna say Discord, but uh, on Disney. But uh, yeah, no, apparently uh, Discord is gonna have an IPO as well sometime this year. That's gonna be, def that's definitely gonna be interesting. I'm very, uh, very, uh, um, it's in, antip in anticipation, I'm excited for, uh, for that IPO if and when that will come along uh, into these markets. But I think, does anybody have, uh, have a rough date? I think there was, uh, there was something released, but I don't remember uh, quite uh, distinctly there for the specific date on that. But yeah, no, definitely uh, that IPO is, uh, is one to watch out for. Nothing else really in terms of IPOs that I have on watch in, in, uh, uh, that may be upcoming. But if you guys have any other ones that uh, I may have missed, let us know, and we'll definitely kind of look into some of those there. I'm still holding on here. The Hayes Records with a $5 super chat. Thank you. Trading, trading's like blackjack. Don't hit a 16, counter trade uh, the hand setup, and double down on 11. Join setup conviction on the hand. Never know, but play it safe. Okay, so he's saying don't hit a 16, uh, so don't counter, counter trade uh, the setup and uh, don't double down on 11? Is that what he's saying? No, jo no, double down on 11. So join, so when you're convicted, you want to join in. But uh, if, you, if you're hitting the counter, don't, uh, I guess he's saying, <clears throat> don't hit the counter if that's what you, that's what you're, that's what you mean. I might have, I might have totally butchered that, but uh, yes. He's, he's making, a, he's making a, a blackjack reference there in terms of opportunistic, uh, uh, grabbing opportunity versus kind of uh, staying away from it for sure. Yeah, no, I really like that. Um, yeah, I do not, I am not like a, a blackjack connoisseur there, so I apologize. But yeah, thank you so much for the super chat. Lolo saying depends on the dealer though, LOL. Yeah, I'm sure, sure it does. Dan, well, yeah. Dan Evans saying, yeah, I butchered that one. Yes, I apologize. I realized halfway through it, I'm like, buddy, you're probably butchering this. Uh, you don't know too much about uh, blackjack or, or, uh, or poker uh, as per se, but uh, yeah, no. Um, if you could, if you could, you know what, Hayes Records. If you could give me a proper explanation, I'm more than willing to kind of uh, read that and correct myself. Because uh, yeah, I'm having some trouble understanding. But I feel like I got a gist of what you might be trying to say. Yeah. Hands and data versus hands and maybes. Boom. Yes. So uh, execute and double down on what you know and, and uh, statistical uh, evidence and uh, versus uh, you know maybes. You don't necessarily want to want to go hard and heavy on the maybes. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know what, like it, was a, it was a great attempt. It was much better than my attempt would have been. So, yeah, thank you very much for, for that, the Hayes records. Also, yeah, the Bears versus Bulls saying, know when to hold them, know when, when to, to fold them. them, know when to walk away, know when to run. Uh, these markets running, Tesla running to the upside right now. I got out of the short. Um, I got out because we kind of got above that area of interest that I had earlier. I should have gotten in this long at 190.40, so it was kind of resistance becoming support. I didn't. If we fall back into that, I'm gonna be interested. However, I will be watching. I'm getting into the old man hand again there, I apologize. I'm gonna be watching for that 191.30 because that was that area where we had quite a lot of consolidation before having a nice little pop and then a drop to the downside. So we'll see if Tesla pops and drops again. I will be definitely watching what we do at 191.40s. Vince Jane saying stock market is poker. And you know what? Cannot agree. This has been this has been such a a look here on this on this market. There's so much to talk about, so much to look at. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting a look at everything here as well. So yeah, really, I just I did get out of that um, that Tesla got out of the cyber truck. We'll see if this continues uh, to run to the upside here. Also, with regards to IPOs, that's what I was thinking about. So uh, Ryan McR saying Reddit IPO is going to be the biggest pump ever. LOL. Yeah, I know Reddit. Reddit IPO. That yeah, one. Yeah. I know also Skims apparently. Yes. Like Kim Kardashian, that I heard is going to IPO Skims? potentially as well. Skims. Yeah, like her little, little like her Spanx. Okay. Um, I think that's what. Oh, they're way more than just thanks, apparently, okay. as well. Yeah, thank you. That's what Ramina's saying. Ramin. She's like, well, they're way more than that. All right. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not that familiar with the brand. I know the ads, and that's kind of it. But yeah, I think that'll be, um, people are, are really, like, you know, hyped for both those IPOs. But I think, yeah, Reddit especially should be very interesting. Uh, Ryan oh, as well. Sure, I think yeah. that'll be a really 
interesting look there. Totally forgot about that one. I knew I was forgetting something. I was like, yeah, Reddit, of course. That's, that's a huge one that's coming up. Yeah, definitely going to be on the watch for Reddit as well. Yeah, I think, I think that will be so many, literally so many things to talk about uh, with, in terms of with these IPOs and with these markets. I'm really excited to see what we have to offer as we get into 2024. Because uh, that, you know, that's what it's all about. It's a, it's a brand new year, new day, and we are feeling good. Shout out to Nina Simone and I guess also Michael Buble, if you want to go the more modern version. For now, though, we're going to do a quick little um, recap of the lesson. Just, uh, you know, we, we went over this a couple times. One last time, um, in case we had any latecomers, because that's what we are about here at How to Trade. We are about uh, how to trade, learning how to trade, I guess. So some, uh, there we are, market terminology. Uh, so bid and the ask. So really, you know, the bid, uh, these are really two key important things to learn here for sure. With the bid, you're going to have the highest price that someone's willing to pay for a stock, security, or other asset. That's going to represent buying pressure. The, the flip side, you've got sell, uh, or sorry, the ask, which is the lowest price that someone's willing to to, uh, to accept. So this is if you have like, you know, your auction paddles all aflutter at some rare art auction. The bid is going to be that, the dramatic running in at the last moment with the paddle and the ask is going to be like the lowest price that someone's willing to sell. It's the, the bottom of the barrel there. And so that's what this represents. So now you have a little interesting factor as well that you might not have in a live auction and that's called the spread. So that is the ask minus the bid. And this is basically the cost of doing business. If you have a tighter spread, you've got a little bit... Uh, more liquid of an asset, which means you've got more buyers and sellers actively chomping at the bit to get involved in this market, and it makes it easier to enter and exit positions. The spread, though, can vary depending on the asset. So Obi took us through that SMCI book, which is a look in terms of spread. So oh, yeah. thank you for doing that earlier as well. That's certainly interesting. Um, and, you know, liquidity and market conditions can also matter as well. And understanding bid and ask dynamics can be really helpful for calculating potential profits and losses and also knowing when to enter trades because that can be really key as well and when to get in and out because yeah. that's something I've noticed, especially for whatever reason, meta, I find to be spready in a way that I really like to, to edit where I'm going to get my profit takers there. And I mean some of the other mega caps as well, but you know, meta, that book for some reason likes to be very difficult. So just things to keep in mind there as well. Uh, yeah, I know it's, a, it's ask minus bids and ask minus big, but spreads are a big deal, so we can, <laughs> can look at it like that. When the spread is big. When, yeah, when the spread is big, you might want to... Yeah, you might, in your mind, you might not be ask minus bid, you might be ask minus big, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, man. I like, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. boy, for sure. Well, I'm reading no, from we'll... oh, boy to oh, man there. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, also, uh, long and short, that's when you've got, you know, you've got a seesaw, uh, different, you, you can put traders on either side of the seesaw there. It means like cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just thought of it. I was like, why not? But, but yeah, so you've got traders on one side, If on imagine, if you will, a seesaw. And the assets price, people who think the assets price will rise are going to be bullish, and they'll be on one side of the seesaw. On the other end, you've got traders who think the price will fall, and those are going to be bearish. So long and short, this is the eternal struggle of the market. You've got the bulls. You've got the bears. They're represented in bulls versus bears screen name. They're represented on uh, Sean and Neil's desk with the little bull and bear puppets. They're really huge uh, parts of the market, but... You know, going long, that's going to be the bullish position or the bull puppet there, if you will. And this is when you buy an asset, hoping its price will increase. It's the buy low, sell high approach. Uh, and this will, you know, if you buy uh, thinking the price will increase, which will allow you to get a profit. This is like buying a ticket on a rocket ship headed to the moon, which is actually what Lunar is uh, doing, that <laughs> intuitive, uh, that stock right there. So, so good luck on that for sure. Uh, but going short is going to be the opposite. So that's when uh, kind of, you know, what, what some of these mag sevens have been doing lately, right? Going to the downside. So that's when you borrow an asset to sell it, hoping that its price will decrease and it'll allow you to move uh, to buy it back at a lower price. So this is uh, buy, sell high, buy low traders. So, uh, and then even when you say this, you can kind of hear the key difference, right? The direction and the actions that you take are going to be inherently different. When you long, you buy first and you sell second. I got really intense there. Apologies. When you short, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to sell more first passion, more and energy. then buy later. I, I don't know if we need that much more energy, Obi, though. I appreciate the support. <laughs> but yeah, we also have profit and loss, which are really going to be key here because how you're deriving your profit and your loss is going to be different. You're going to derive profit in a long from an asset going higher. And you're going to derive profit from a short 
from the asset going lower. And then your losses are gonna be if they move against you. So in a long, if it goes below your point of entry, that's when you're gonna incur a loss. Shorts, if it goes above your point of entry, that's when you're gonna incur a loss. So you have to really keep in mind to flip your thinking when you're in different trades. And that's something I kind of struggle with sometimes because I'm always like, you know, if you get in a certain mode, you really just wanna make sure you know, hey, this is a long, this is a short. Make sure you have reasons for entering your positions too. Maybe the market's telling you something, maybe there's technical elements. Make sure that you have a full analysis before you go long or short. Also, not all assets are gonna be available to short. Uh, you know, we have Neil and Sean talking a lot about locates uh, and always, you know, maybe consult your broker, consult whomever for details to make sure that you know what you're doing in terms of some of these harder to short positions, especially because shorts will sometimes carry additional risks like margin calls, which we're gonna talk about next in margin and leverage. We like a fun transition here on how to trade. Uh, margins. What, you know, what is, what is really a margin? You could think of it as having a financial superpower. So it really allows you to control a larger position than your own capital might allow. And so you should use this though with caution. So margin is like a loan from your broker. You deposit a, a minimum amount, usually about 25 to 50% of the position value. That's gonna be your margin. And then you're gonna borrow the rest to control a larger position. It's like using a lever or getting your friends to help you carry a couch into your apartment or to carry a large weight or a statue. If we're gonna go back to the art metaphor from the auction, if you will. You want a little extra weight, that's when you get your margin involved. And then the leverage is where things get a little bit tricky. This is like a magnifying glass. The board portion will represent leverage, which magnifies your potential profits if the price moves in your favor. But remember, it also will magnify your losses if the price goes against you. So this can go either way. It's a double-edged sword. It's very much a case of more risk and more reward uh, coming hand in hand there. So be very, very cautious. Also just seeing Eric Barkhurst in the, the chat, this market hyphen. Yeah, I mean that literally, I'm, I just wanted to, to shout that out. Nothing to do with the lesson. Uh, all the lessons about the market, so it does. Yeah. Um, so there we go, bang indeed there, bang button there. Uh, but also worth noting some other key points here. So higher leverage can also equal higher potential returns and losses, like we said. The risk to reward can be amplified, so make sure you've got risk management in check before getting involved in something a little bit trickier like this. Now, um, margin requirements can also vary depending on the asset and your broker, so make sure you know everything before getting involved. And again, you know, be very cognizant of your risk management. Now, also margin calls. Not the movie, but margin calls. Um, so this is when your account volume falls below the threshold due to losses, you might get a call, or as Obi mentioned, an email in the, this day and age from your broker being like, hey, get it together, <laughs> deal with this, this is getting a little dicey. Um, and so margin trading can be really lucrative, as you said, but it can also be, can get a little messy a little quickly. And so that's when you want strong risk management skills, a really good understanding of technical analysis, understanding, hey, does this make sense for me at this point? What am I gaining or losing from this trade? And you want the discipline to avoid emotional trading. So some alternatives to margin could be focusing on smaller positions funded by your own capital, or just start with paper trading before you get a little bit comfortable, or, or as you get a bit more comfortable, sorry. And as someone who has been lucky enough to be uh, paper trading here and in the sim on the plot floor, I can say it's really helpful to get a sense of your, your risk and reward there. Last but not least, order types. You've got market orders. These are the now whatever. They execute immediately at the best available price and they make sure your order gets filled ASAP Rocky. These can capture, you know, Obi got what it took us through a really good example as well of these um, of market orders, right? So sometimes you want to get in and out super in a super speedy fashion yep. and not deal with any of the mess of the market. Yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like uh, market orders, I, like I said, um, again, yeah. Depends on the situation, right? Uh, I think uh, in, a, in an environment where there's a strong momentum and it's competitive, in a competitive environment, maybe you don't want to be standing in line. You're not going to get you, you, the probability of you getting filled in a competitive environment when you, if and when you're standing in line, uh, maybe it may be against your favor, right? Where you want to, what, uh, how you're trying to transact, right? If you're trying to go long, if you're trying to go short, regardless of uh, which way, it, it might not be the best way to execute but yeah definitely market orders uh, are, uh, are are some of the some of the best ways to uh, remove liquidity right it's just like you if you if you see the price action being aggressive you can see that it's competitive and you're like all right well I'm gonna pick a direction I'm gonna pick a bias I'm gonna send that market order in there make sure I can get whatever I can get um, at the at the in and around the prices that I want maybe it's not even price sensitive maybe it's just I'm looking for this momentum to slow down and as uh, until it shows me otherwise I just want to be long and that could be that could be the trade as well but uh, yeah regardless of uh, of uh, either either or um, 
type of orders definitely, like we said, you got to bring the right kit to every arena, and the type of orders you're using are definitely a, a big part of your kit uh, as to how you're approaching the trade or how you're approaching the scenario on the day, whether it's if it's momentum, it's very strong, it's competitive, or it's a little bit slower, you can kind of stand in line, you know you have a decent chance of getting filled, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but uh, yeah, got to be very wary of uh, the type of orders that you're using. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that you brought up that analogy from earlier as well with regards to what weapons you have in your arsenal. Market orders can be very helpful in some scenarios, but also sometimes you might want to be a bit more patient. Oh, that did not work out. That was going to be patient. Yeah, and that's when you get perfect. limit orders. Yeah. Uh, and these are going to be the more patient negotiators. This is when you have a desired price or a limit to buy or sell, and the order will only execute if the market price reaches your limit. Yeah. So this makes sure you get your desired price or better. It's kind of like setting a boundary for your trade. Instead of punching right in with a swiftness, you want to kind of wait, stay back, and you're going to be more of a patient observer. You're going to be a little late to the party instead of right away. And you know, this can certainly be a valid uh, approach depending on what your trade is going to be. We also have stop loss orders. These are going to be a safety net. They give you a little bit of protection. This is when you're already in a trade and you want to automatically sell your position if a price falls below a specific level or a stop loss price, limiting potential losses if the market moves against you. It's like setting a self-destruct timer to protect your capital. And we talked a little bit last week as well, I believe, about mental stop losses versus physical stop losses. There are certainly times, though, too, where you want a more physical stop loss if there's a very volatile stock cough cough an SMCI or something like that where you really want to be very cautious and Eli Lilly might be very helpful for that as well but I think yeah I think certainly the stop loss orders even if you have a mental stop just make sure you have something so that you know if the trade goes against you you're not standing there like a little deer in the headlines uh, you have you have a plan to exit which I think is really important we also have stop limit orders. So this is when you have the caution of a stop loss order yeah. with the flexibility Look of a trailing stop loss, which right we'll get now. to in a minute. These are going to act like stop loss orders, but they have an added limit protection. The order will trigger a market order to sell only if the price falls below your stop loss level and reaches your specific limit price. So it's like a two-step safety net gives you a little bit more control over the execution price. And last but not least, trailing stops. Uh, stopping with trailing the stops. Other way. Yeah. So these are uh, trailing stop loss orders for dynamic protection. They adjust the stop loss level automatically as the price moves in your direction. So if you're in a long and it crawls to the upside, that trailing stop is going to crawl right up with you. It's like your little cape behind you blowing in the wind as you make your as you make your profits, hopefully, to give you a little bit more protection. And it does protect you against reversals, which is really key. Because if you're doing well, you want to make sure you're not losing more than you have to. And that's where you've got your cape there behind you. To How's it going? Arm, yeah, he just made an arm gesture too. So shout out to Sean with arm, strong arming the market there. Oh yeah, um, definitely. So he's thank got, you he's very got much. all the shorts on board. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely short was the way to go off uh, off the open today. A lot of a lot of uh, nice pullbacks uh, into 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 some previous uh, previous levels across the board. There, you can see Apple pulling into 180. 180 flat is the lower day right now. 389 on softy. Uh, Alphabet's holding VWAP somehow. <laughs> Amazon's still trading below VWAP and uh, trading below that 167. And uh, yeah, a lot of these other names as well. Again, obviously Walmart. You know, we're in Walmart. We, that's that's been pulling off as well. One of the one of the uh, earning na earnings names on the day. This is a this is a pretty this is pretty crazy. You can see this volume bar right here. And oh boy, you guys know I like to put. Uh, he, I, I don't know what it means, but uh, we got a, we got a nice, uh, nice large order that kind of came in in and around some of these prices here. Uh, it would seem 400 thou on a, on a on a dark pool at uh, at 446 apparently um, at around 132 came in. So uh, a little bit of a dark pool liquidity. Uh, I don't know if it was currently, you know, that some some dark pools they print later. Uh, they, they print older transactions uh, much, much later. But uh, I don't know if it was one of those. I don't know if it was in the lit market, but definitely some volume coming in uh, uh, after in and around some of this consolidation area. It would seem on softy there. So that's definitely a look. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys are trading. I'm not really, uh, uh, I'm not really kind of uh, looking at too much else. I got the spy on watch. Obviously, I'm looking at Softy. I'm looking at Apple. And uh, yeah, what were some of the other names I was looking at as well? Of course, I'm looking at the VIX. The VIX is kind of waking up. If you guys haven't noticed, we are in a VIX above 15. Oh boy. 
Might be fine. It might be time to party soon, but no, I'm just joking. But uh, but a but a VIX above 15, definitely uh, definitely some fun times indeed. Uh, let's see. Hopefully we can uh, we can kind of uh, make some decent moves uh, uh, in volatility, and uh, with uh, with uh, with the increased volatility, maybe we can get some decent opportunities. Again, we we uh, we uh, we've been here pretty much every day. We can understand that the market has been uh, a little giving over the past few weeks. A lot of opportunities to go around. A lot of interest and a lot of sentiment and a lot of uh, sec hot sector moves as well of course chips can't can't uh, we, we can't be anywhere with uh, w without some of these chips that we've had uh, putting in some crazy crazy numbers uh, all of last year right could have bought a lot of these names early in uh, 23 and uh, you'd be laughing straight to the bank uh, <laughs> in, in January 24 but uh, yeah for sure a lot of opportunities. VIX being ab above 15, I like that. Uh, let's uh, let's play for sure. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. And I even remember when I started, so we're talking like uh, late summer, early fall 2023, AMD below 100, trading that la di da di da not realizing it would end up like basically doubling that by the end of the year. And, and Lisa Sue and her multicolored suits having a fabulous time there. Uh, what a look for AMD. Also, shout out to um, Sharif, who is sick today, because I know he's always loving the Lisa Sue power suit, so got to shout those out. I did get into a, a baby Tesla long. I say baby because this is a really small position. This is just because I like I like support uh, becoming resistance. I like resistance becoming support. In this case, we had a repeated area of resistance of that 190.20 area. We're holding this support actually pretty well. I've watched this test a couple times. If we have a decide to break below that 190 into that 189.80, we're going to have to get out of this. I would like to take profit. Um, I'm going to be aiming for that 191 area. If we can't get 191, I like that 190, 70 area. So I have, you know, that's when I say scalpulation, I always mean having a plan, but being willing to adapt based on what the book tells me. So that's what I'm looking at for Tesla. Also, NVIDIA continues to range. Like, this is this is some kind of gift, and I, I've only taken a couple bites of this apple. I really should have been in video more than I have been today, but this is a heck of a look here. Also, I think the long is even bolstered by the fact that we have higher high, higher lows is kind of a stretch, but not lower lows, right? We're kind of more around the same area. It's a pretty nice, nice little spiffy little range here, so I might continue uh, to play this. Also, um, Sean and a user in the chat getting into a dual war over points here. So that's been very entertaining <laughs> as well. Always fun things to see in the chat. What a great um, community here as well. Also, Elon saying, was last Friday the beginning of the correction? I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see, right? Like, it's hard to, it's really hard to Where diagnose these things before they occur, right? But I mean, let's look at the, let's see, let, let's spy the spy here. Let's take a look at the spider. Um, is our spider sense tingling for a correction? Uh, let's go on the the daily chart. Okay, it's in. Uh, it's interesting. I don't want to, you know, diagnose any moves, but I will say we got kind of chop and churnish as we get into February 9th. So we did, you know, we made some other higher highs here. We got into that um, 502 kind of area. This is the SPY, mind you. February um, 16th, still not higher highs, mind you, but we did get high, and then we still had that big move to the downside. So we had this. What, what a red candle here. And certainly seeing a little bit of that too. Like basically what I'm trying to say is I'm seeing this range at least on a closing basis. 494 to about no, uh, like this, this 502 area. So open to close area, not talking about wicks. 502 to 494 getting kind of chop and churn over the last couple of weeks. I think it needs to kind of more make up its mind before we say correction. Cause you know, big thing I'm learning too is don't participate don't anticipate participate i almost said it very much the wrong way yeah. there um which i noticed because obi was like grinning and i was like i did something wrong there but yeah i think i think the spy is certainly getting kind of rangy if this was i'll put it this way if this is intraday i'd probably play this range but alas it is on the daily charts we're gonna have to wait and see how this goes quite a look there tesla inching up so i am pleased as punch also i have a question i guess what what, do, what does it take for the market to make you say Oh boy! Like, are there any particular qualifiers, or is it just something interesting in a good way or a bad yeah, way? Yeah, it's something just yeah. interesting. Something like something that if it's like, oh, if it's moving too hard, too fast, yeah, it's definitely worth a little bit of an oh boy. Um, uh, we got a little bit of a, a VWAP wash, which was uh, again, you you snap through the 400 and you come right back in to below 399 and change, and then you rebid right back through that 400. Oh boy, does that look like that? That looks like some interesting action indeed. Um, but uh, again. Already got into a little bit of a long. I like what I'm seeing here. Let's see what we do in and around VWAP. Uh, I have no idea. I'm just going to let this position kind of cook. Let's see what happens there. Um, and again, it's a, it's the middle of the day. Nothing too crazy. Uh, uh, um, 
Uh, shout out to shout out to Neil there. I remember in one of his uh, one of his uh, um, uh, real deal with Neil's last week. He was talking about switching gears uh, versus the time of day, and uh, I was definitely vibing with uh, vibing with that advice there. I definitely have to switch gears, and uh, sometimes you know this transmission isn't that clean and needs some work there. You know, maybe not so good from switching from sixth all the way back into first for the for the afternoon session there. But uh, yeah, no, this is something I definitely got to work on. But yeah, different different kind of trading during the midday uh, for sure. Nothing too crazy unless it's doing volume, right? Again, volume. Again, I, I love volume as being an indicator and uh, kind of flow as well. How how we're kind of dealing with that volume and uh, yeah, depending on those two uh, those two indicators, it might not matter what time of day it is. But most of the time, yeah, definitely you have to you have to you have to be able to switch gears uh, on that. I gotta go watch back that video, Dara. That was definitely definitely some good stuff. Uh, Again, shout out to shout out to Neil. Neil's lesson of the day. I forget which which day was that, Neil. I think it was on Wednesday or Tuesday, maybe. Um, yeah, it was last week for sure. Yeah, because because I, I remember I remember watching and I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely have to keep this in mind. It's a good uh, good reinforcement of uh, of uh, how to carry yourself throughout the day, right? We can, it's a hot market. There's lots of opportunity. And again, going back to the preservation of mental, uh, 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 in my review this weekend, I was asking myself, I was like, listen, like, what is the type of trading you're doing in this type of market? There's a hundred different ways to trade. A lot of them will make money. Some of them won't. A lot of them won't. But at the same time. Are you exhausting your mental? Are you keeping yourself sane for the next trade? Maybe it's that midday trade. Maybe it's that level to level. Maybe it's a position. It, maybe it's you buy the open and you sell the close. And whatever it is, are you keeping your mental preserved with the type of trading that you're doing? And this is like a thought process that I was having over the weekend. I'm like, huh, this, is, this is, might be something I should be focusing on, in a, especially in a market like this, right? And it's like, if I'm not able to keep myself alive, and I get you get a move, you get a strong move. Maybe you get a, for example, Apple announced the AI news literally at the end of the day, not last Friday, but the Friday before, right? With about 15, 20 minutes left into the close. So if an intraday catalyst is part of your playbook, and you're 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 pretty much exhausted 15 minutes before the end of the day, but the trade was definitely there. It gave you a strong move off of it. It gave you a nice little flush back. Regardless of what, how you look at it in retrospect, the, the stock moved on that intraday catalyst. And that kind of, uh, I was looking back at that and I was like, hey, listen, like if you don't properly preserve the mental and preserve that, uh, that ability throughout the day, are you really giving yourself a good chance at opportunity, uh, at, grasping opportunity in this market. Now, I don't know the answer to that. That's just like a little thought that I had over the weekend. And I'm, uh, I've been thinking about that more and more uh, as of late. Again, watching this market, I'm like, okay, well, there's a trade there, there's a trade there, there's that trade. Um, but how many are actually part of my playbook? And how many uh, do I have the right kind of mental uh, aptitude at this current time of day to take on with the risk I have? But a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, a um, rant there. But uh, yeah, how how are you doing? Are you in any positions there? Is that you, you got into? I just got out of this. Yeah. On Tesla, nice. Yeah, Very thank nice. you. Yeah, I mean, also Bears versus Bulls put the the link for you for that um, that that the switching thank gears. Thank you, Bears so, versus Bulls. Yeah, thank you very much, Bears versus Bulls. So um, yeah, yeah I just wanted to. Appreciate Sometimes you need that quick that. shift, you know. Sometimes you need to be like, oh well, we're we're cruising pretty fast, going first straight to sixth. But sometimes no, you gotta you gotta pull that back. I, I really like that analogy. That's what I was like vibing with again. Cars. Yeah, I, yeah. I gotta get more into the the car analogies for sure because life is a highway, and in this Tesla highway, I was going long after a couple shorts. Right. So why I got in here? I think I, I might have talked about this briefly, but I've been obsessed with this 19020 area. Like, oh my gosh, I shorted it twice. Second time wasn't successful. That's okay. Just wait, be patient. We came back into it. I watched this test this 190 a couple times. Got it, I think 190.09s. Then my plan for an exit, like I said, was I was gonna watch that 191 area with extra attention paid to that 190, uh, this kind of area where we chopped and turned earlier. So that 190.60 area, 190.70. We blew past that with a little bit of trouble at 191. So I ended up getting out 190.89s. Please just punch with this trade. Really just about having a level in mind, being cognizant of it. And uh, really, I think, 
lots of learning. I'm, I'm happy with the trading week so far, but it's only one day in, and it's a shortened week, so we're going to have to wait and see. I make no guarantees. I make no promises. Just trying to learn a little bit every day, seeing what Mother Market teaches me, because, you know, sometimes she'll send you to home without supper, oh, and yeah. sometimes she'll be like, hey, here's dessert. Here you go, right? And it's really about how are you communicating with her? How are you responding to her? Are you being kind to her? You know, are you treating her with respect? So I think that's something uh, really key to get into this analogy that OB has it's kind of brought forward, the concept of mother market. And I think sometimes it's about how you treat her and how you adapt to her as well. Because you brought a couple, couple of points earlier that I find I found really important as well, even just now, about switching your gears and adapting to what the market's giving you. So in this case, Tesla was initially giving you the short, and it gave you the short a couple times. Then, then it was just like, you know, hey, maybe we have a long to pop off here. Shout out to Jay Haas and a couple other people talking about that potential Tesla long. Uh, not potential... I was going to try to do a potential Tesla pun. That didn't work. But it's, yeah, certainly... Um, Model, why the heck not right now? <laughs> Continuing to move to the upside. However, I am still cognizant of that 190, 125 area from whence we chop and churned, then popped and then fell earlier. So that would be my area I'm keeping an eye on here for sure. Couple mentions of Holo. So let's see if we kind of have um, this. Oh, oh, Holo's interesting. I got excited there. Flat bottom. That was break. the one that was running last week. Oh, right? Hollow has been running since the week before. Oh, talk yeah. about a parabolic short. Yeah, this was this was insane. We had a, a little bit of a, a pre-market area, this 52, slightly higher lows, swoop to the downside. Quaduk, shout out to Sharif. Then we come to another one of Sharif's uh, sayings, the flat bottom break. Mm -hmm. We get into this very defined 34 area. We have that high of 44. Come down, touch it again. Uh, touch, yeah, sorry, the high of 44. Touch 34 again. Come into the 38, coinciding with where VWAP now is. We have this candle that shows we have the seller's overwhelming buyers. Then we make another touch and a quadunk through 34, falling to the downside. Now we are at 16, bouncing up. So this is a, quite a look here. Hopefully no one got too swept up in this. I mean that in all sincerity, because this is, it's one thing to talk about one of these moves down, but it's also quite another to be in it. So hopefully right. nobody got uh, swept up in the sauce here, because this was, yeah, you said parabolic, and I'm going to echo that. Parabolic move there. For, for holographic Ponzi Fonzi saying lots of bag boys in that one crying emoji. Yeah, I think unfortunately that was definitely going to be the case. You bagging the longs or the shorts? Because there's one party that's definitely winning. Yeah, I think right now we, we ended up bag. Yeah, I think the longs got unfortunately a little bit <laughs> hurt there. Um, yeah, this was this was quite a look here. But you know what else has been quite a look? And I mean, keeps giving you this same area. I know I've been talking about it all day, but it keeps proving itself. Nvidia, who does does this does this range want to end Nvidia? Because I don't know. I mean, it keeps keeps proving itself. 683, 680, more or less. These slightly lower highs though are making me nervous about shorting this area down. I think the long from that 680 ask seems to be clear because that 680 bottom has been pretty clear. Uh, but I, happy I got to get a couple trades here. No complaints from me. Congrats to anybody playing this because I think you had a lot of opportunities to play. This is an example of. Uh, shout out to Sharif for, for really teaching me this one. Support becoming resistance, right? We had that support, uh, 684, 683, 682 kind of range. You get a couple longs out of that. Then it became resistance, and you could just kind of short the pops there. So I think, yeah, chips with the dip and chips with the rip, if you were involved in NVIDIA there. Uh, OB, I know, mentioned, mentioned this one quite a bit. But, yeah, I think, too... Um, yeah, NVIDIA longer term has been certainly interesting. We have earnings tomorrow after close, so oh, yeah. keep an eye on that. But today, NVIDIA certainly rangy, although I would agree not has not been rangy um, other than this. Also, yeah, shout out to the Market Recap Show where Sean's going to take you through NVIDIA earnings yep. after market close on Wednesday. But it'll also take you through the markets every day from 4 to 4.30, except for when the podcast is filmed. Shout out to Sean, always killing it there. DraftKing, flat bottom break, 41.20, says Manuel Palma. Let's look at... Draft Kings. I always want to say Donkey Kong when I see this one. Whoo! Draft Kings is getting getting spicy. Oh, that looks spicy. like a flat, flat bottom break, does it not? Yeah, I would I would concur bit, with Manuel Palma. A little bit of a Pana. shelf going on there. Yeah, a little little shelfy there. Um, yeah, it seems like the bets, the odds are for Draft Kings that we're gonna maybe have a flat bottom break here. But again, we don't want to diagnose moves before they happen. So let's talk about the case for this being a flat bottom break with that in mind. You know, Brendan and I were talking about this one on the big desk this morning. Nine positive analyst moves for this this morning coming off of earnings. They had the jack pocket acquisition, slight sales miss, but earnings per sale, pretty hearty beat there. So overall, the earnings were not too negative for DraftKings. But yeah, we had a little bit of chop and churn in the pre-market. 
fell with a swiftness at 930. We fell into that 4120, as Manuel Palma mentioned, and we have not really given it up. We had this, the highest high we got kind of was this 42, then these lower highs kind of continuing. Mostly, though, been pretty rangy, that 4160, 4120. Now, what's interesting, though, is we seem to be making a slightly lower low. I think if we get a little bit of an influx of volume here, I think we could break to the downside. I think if we make another higher high above that 4160, could get dicey. But I think um, I think that could that could certainly um, be something to keep an eye out there for. So I think yeah, that we've got DraftKings there. I think that flat bottom break certainly could get interesting, and I don't I don't disagree that this could come to fruition here for this um, this DraftKings flat bottom break. What are you looking at? Uh, so I got out of that that uh, the breadcrumbs on uh, on uh, on the Walmart there, and I'm like, all right, well, you know what? If you're gonna do that, then I will kind of uh, reassess there, because it's like if it's gonna curl, it's been selling off all day. If it kind of uh, slowly treks all the way back up to VWAP, I don't necessarily want to be uh, on the short side there. I'll get involved again if it gives it to me again, or if we kind of reclaim it into this into this previous uh, this, this shelf right now. But as of right now, I am kind of done with this one. Um, but yeah, it could, could definitely doing could definitely be doing much better on on this trade here. Again, that failure to follow through at that 180 comes in all the way to 175 and change. And uh, yeah, clearly I do not have enough of the trade. But uh, I guess decisions were made. Some of them good, some of them not that great. But uh, again, it's a work in progress. Let's see how it goes. Next trade I'm looking at is this softy that I am in right now. But uh, where will she go? I have no idea. But uh, the alpha holding uh, VWAP is definitely interesting as well. Uh, a little bit of a sideways action on App Apple hasn't really gone anywhere. Sideways on sideways on Amazon as well. The ES and the NQ, like I said before, it hasn't really gone anywhere. We were talking about how we were just like chopping and churning uh, in and around this 17 half, and we're pretty much right there. We're only about 20 points, uh, give or take, off of uh, off of that area. So maybe some more time. Maybe uh, we're just gonna stay here. I have no idea. I'm just like Adara said, gotta gotta stay nimble and gotta respect the the, the information that the market's kind of giving us and uh, try to participate. Not really anticipate, but uh, again, I think uh, I think I am. I'm doing. I might be doing a little bit of both. There, I did see something that I did want to participate with, and uh, in anticipation of a certain type of move. But uh, we'll see if it comes or not. I have no idea. Uh, like I was saying last week, I got to do better with uh, taking what the mar what the market give uh, gives me. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit. Sometimes it's more than expected. But just got to say thank you and move on to the next trade. And uh, yeah, I don't have anything else really on watch. Can you guys take a look into FedEx, FDX, says uh, Ja Chun. Okay, so let's take a quick look at FDX right here. FDX, all right. One of my buddies, he actually, uh, I think, uh, yeah, he used, to, he, used to work for, he used to work for FedEx. Um, he was an engineer at FedEx, so uh, he was always talking about how uh, how uh, they're gonna be? They're gonna be good. They're gonna be the next. You know, I don't know. But uh, the ticker itself does quite well for for, for itself, I think. Yeah. But uh, it, we're trading below earnings. It would seem. I, I didn't realize that. Okay, so we did have earnings at the end of December there, and we've slowly been kind of uh, just uh, sideways now trading below that on FDX there. <clears throat> So uh, yeah, it's a bit of an bit of an interesting look. I think there's nothing much to say here other than uh, a little bit of a sideways action. Looking left, let's take a look at a higher time frame as well. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, you know we'll go to the we'll go to the weekly. Um, I don't necessarily like to start off right away on the daily, but the weekly I think I like uh, seeing what those guys are up to as well. So. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a strong strong push there. Again, I'm sure this ticker looks very similar to a lot of these other tickers that we've been pretty much only been bidding up since the 1990s. But uh, holding its own FedEx again, one of the largest uh, one of the larger shippers uh, on uh, on the planet. I think uh, what, what is it? Am doesn't Amazon isn't Amazon up there as well? Yeah, they, they do they do enough uh, they do enough shipping that they're they're a strong contender for that title as uh, as well. But uh, FedEx a little sideways, it would seem. I have nothing to say really about FedEx. It wasn't really on my game plan. I don't really look at it that often, don't really have a perspective on it. But with the limited information that's on the chart, I can just regurgitate some of these candles that we're seeing. We're, we've been trading sideways since, uh, pretty much sideways since this earnings quadunk that we had from these highs at 285. So FedEx seems like a decent look. It has been trending apparently on the weekly 
for a very long time uh, FedEx. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, we'll have to see if a trade delivers because it has certainly been top and turn there on FedEx. You gotta hit the like for that one. For the time being. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> much appreciated. Also, uh, much appreciated is Neil's little rhyme here in the chat. OPP nimble, OPP quick, Microsoft long gonna carry the ship. And I mean, Bang. yeah, congrats on that Microsoft long, like almost a dollar in the money here. OPP just quietly sitting here and killing it. So congrats to you and thank you so much for, for coming on today. I don't know about today. killing it, but thank you. I just, I, again, like I'm talking about like getting better. Like it's like, I, need, I gotta find places to get more. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, I think we're we're all trying. Sometimes to learn it works, day. sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, so it's nothing, nothing too crazy. But a uh, bit of a bit of a bit of a curl, a little bit there. We were we're holding as of right now. We're we're like I said, we're churning around that 17 half uh, on uh, on uh, the NQ. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to find I'm trying to find that uh, the rhyme on uh, in in the chat there. So let's see. Okay, yeah, nice. I like that. What, Neil, when is, when is it? When is the next? Uh, when is the next wrap that you're going to be doing? I miss those. You guys are not giving us enough likes, so Neil is saying you have to cancel. You got to. You guys got to step your game up. <laughs> Opie's like, no. Hit not. those likes. Hit those likes, so we can hear Neil rap again. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, that would be very fun time. I, as someone who was a rap aficionado. I would very much enjoy hearing that as well. Also, though, I did, you know, want to look at, I wanted to discover, discover financial DFS. There was someone in the chat, I apologize. Do not remember who Earnings it is. Today, right? um, they, they had, or, um, or less. there was a, there was. Um, Sometime soon, I think, or was recent. I know they had a, they were getting, there was an acquisition here with uh, City or Capital One here, COF. So I'm oh, not that's thinking, what it that was. That was what this Never was. Never mind. This yeah, point. no, yeah. it did. I definitely did have a catalyst. I remember. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, I get yeah. what you mean, though. It's like some kind of big thing to have it move parabolically. Yeah, Capital One to acquire Discover. Discover shareholders to receive 1.0192. That's so specific. Capital One shares per Discover share at a 26.6% premium. So that's a that's a really nice look here. And I wanted to look here at the daily because I believe uh, the person in the chat wanted a wider frame look here at. Uh, Discover Financial, and I think the main levels I'm seeing here, bottom, this 92, one, two, three, four, five touches of support. Then we get one, two touches of resistance. So I think this 92 tweet did interesting, should we fall with the swiftness? In terms of uh, the upper end of the range here, I like this 112. Uh, we did gap up from there, which I think is always interesting. We had that touch coming into, where is my trusty little, um, this tool, there's this tool, here we go, the selector. This January 5th touch, we had some, a couple touches there of that 114, that 112 area I like. We also kind of got into it March 2023, again, May tw uh, 31st. So I think if we fall back, that could be interesting. In terms of more recent areas, should we fall back from this big parabolic bounce to the upside on this catalyst? I think this 118 area, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, touches of um, resistance there, that could certainly, become fruitful. This one's certainly trying to recover up here, and I think that 92 bottom is a nice place to look at on the downside. Uh, Rock Duck saying hit that uh, dollar button for OB. I do not have my um, stream deck up right now, unfortunately. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, dollar club. Oh, boy. That Microsoft long is great. But for now, unfortunately, you know. For now. Not, not, no, I, meant, I did not mean that for the Microsoft log. I meant that for our sign off. Uh, congrats to you. Thank you. Fabulous look. Uh, but for now, though, we are going to say au revoir in a couple seconds here. Uh, but thank you so much again, Obi, for coming. I didn't even on. realize what time it was. It, yeah, it kind the of time, flew by there. Time flies uh, when you're trading. Hopefully, you guys learned a little bit something about uh, the bid and the ask and the spreads and the offers and margins and everything. Shout out to Dara for pretty much carrying the lesson there. Hopefully, Sharif feels a little better. But uh, yeah, no, thank you, Adara. Yeah, th thank thank you so much for all, like I love all the, the analogies and everything. And I think you really gave a broader understanding of it that I, you know, I didn't have. I learned a lot from you today for sure. And I think everybody else learned a little something as well. Hopefully, uh, thanks again for Sharif for putting everything together. Hopefully he feels better soon. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. But for now, we've got Brendan at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome back in. Two o'clock on a busy afternoon here as we uh, try to get back to the upside here this afternoon for both the NASDAQ 